you'll see that look at the cartilages as you're studying it look at the cartilages and the heels see and how much they changed in a short period of time now the oh just a minute i gotta okay i had to turn that down um you look at the cartilages and you see, you know, we talk, talk a lot about bound cartilages, you know, and how in the whole hoof care industry, they just have not paid any attention to two thirds of the foot hardly. Um, you got the coffin bone and the rest is soft tissue, fat, cartilage, and uh, that's two thirds of this foot. So what you're seeing there is just a small example of how the foot can be bound up and released in a short period of time. Now, um, the problem I started seeing was uh, I kept regressing <laughs> and going backwards. And I'm kind, part of it is my fault because I just kind of wasn't feeling good, wasn't trimming as often as I should. And I let things kind of go. And his foot is not established yet to what I want it to be. It's still, yeah, I hate to say, I'm still in a process of corrective trimming. Um, just a minute here. Okay, so, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to stop here for a second. Just let you study these pictures. Look, 12, 21, 20, and uh, 12, 23, 2020 and 1224 2020 that shows you how much this cartilage can change and that third picture this one right here that's the true cartilage that's what you want and then you want the hoof capsule and the frog stay and everything to come in and grow to that place and keep it there um that would be the true foot of the horse, except the dorsal wall would be steeper, the heels would be back, the frog stay would be up, um, it'd be fuller in between where you see here, it's kind of hollowed out there a little bit. Um, so that would be the true foot of the horse right there, the cartilages. Now imagine, um, imagine the, okay, the distance, look at, you look at the back of the pastern bone here, and where the cartilages are bound and the heels are here. Okay, now imagine if the cartilages had full extension and your heels came all the way back to here. Do you see the support that that's gonna put on the back of that foot, restoring that? So anyway, um, I, as I said, I kept regressing and going backwards. I've figured out a couple of reasons for that. Um, and so I'm gonna show you that today. And I'm going to do a demonstration of, of uh, well, I did a trim. So I'm just going to show you what I did, right, wrong, and different. You, you need to realize I'm still learning. I, I haven't got this down. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to scare you there. Um, <laughs> oh, no. We're following somebody who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> um, there's some areas I, I'm iffy on, you know. And, uh, but there's a lot of things now that I know for sure. And um, uh, anyway, so I'm gonna share some of that stuff with you today. Uh, so anyway, let me get this uh, going here first. Post this on, what is going on? Something is going on. I gotta find my, the address for this. So hold on. Oh. Oh, that's the live. It just says youtube.com watch. Okay, there we go. I got it. it. Was confusing me. All right. So I'm going to post that there. And there. Wow, we got a we got a lot of people today. And 
Okay. All right. So I got that posted on uh, Facebook. Okay. So I, I, I want you to look at this picture just a minute here. Let me find it. And the one, and you'll see that I, I did regress. And see, I went through a bunch of my pictures and I was like, what is going on? What is happening? Why am I going backwards? You know, um, now here's the thing that you need to know of what I believe. I believe that when you are doing correction and you are trying to take these foot to a certain place that you cannot let them get overly established where they're at. You can't let them have a whole lot of bar and a whole lot of soul and a whole lot of this and that because then stuff was not going to move. Now, I was conducting an experiment here because I had just learned. Now, we've been trimming this periopal skin. OK, but I had just learned about um, how it was binding, keeping my foot bound over the over the very back of the frog stay. You have periopal skin growing. It's uh, Bracey Clark named it in the mid 1800s, named it the frog curtain because it literally covers over the back of the frog. Now, we have been trimming that. But I did not realize that in the center that it would get super thick. I thought I was looking at frog stay, but I was looking at a layer of periopal that covered the frog stay. And what this per and see, I knew the periopal bound the foot, but I didn't realize that that one piece right up in here between the bulbs that several things happened to it. One, when when the heels got trimmed out and all this got sucked in and over that way, that periopal skin got sucked in up in there and uh, it bound the frog right there. And all your frog corium, everything gets pulled under the foot here. And so if all this is gonna change, that frog corium has to come loose and that periopal skin that got shoved up into your central sulcus and even became the central sulcus, if that needs to get, get eventually released and trimmed out. And so when I did this, okay, that was 2012. Okay. When I did this, I was experimenting with trying to release that periopal and release these cartilages. And I was keeping a boot on him and I was using a, uh, uh, D.F. Crosley's paste on his coronary bands here to keep them soft. And I only had one boot because I don't have any boots. So I had one boot, poor guy. Anyway, I had this one boot on his foot and I was just experimenting with releasing the, the seeing if I could release the cartilages. And it sure did, you know, but then, uh, well, life happens, you know, and my, I kind of fell by the wayside because I had been dealing with some health things and stuff like that. And uh, his foot regressed. Okay, so. Um, let me, uh, let me show you, uh, the before and after of my most recent trim on this same foot. And you'll see how much these feet can change. I mean, right here, you're seeing, look at that, how rounded that is there. See, this was like ideal. I mean, it, it just blew me away. But anyway, but then guess what? Um, because there was still, it was moist. That's what allowed it to expand like that. Then as soon as it dried, it kind of went back to where it was. Um, another problem I realized I was having that is that no matter how much I have been thinking, I have been trimming these toe quarters right. I have not been trimming them quite correct. And here's something that'll happen too. Not only will your cartilages bind up and keep your foot from going where you want it to go, but um, uh, these toe quarters are, are obnoxious, okay? They're really hard to trim correctly. Uh, and, and if you don't, then guess what? You know what? Your foot's going to be here and it ain't going nowhere. It's going to stay there. And so I'm going to try and show you the growth that happens so subtly, you don't even realize it's, it's happening. And the next thing you know, 
uh, they're just kind of edging your toe forward out here. And uh, your foot is distorted again before you even know what happened. So, you know, here you can see I was doing pretty good. Things were going in a good direction. Now let me show you. This is, what is it? Um, uh, almost a year later. Okay, because it's 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever. So let me get in and uh, get these pictures. And then we're going to look at the videos I took um, of the trim I did yesterday. And I'll just share with you what I've been trying to do and work on. And, uh, you know, if it works for you, good. Um, uh, I'm not saying that, that, that uh, like I said, like I know everything, I'm doing everything just perfect. That's, that's just ain't, that ain't the way it is. Okay, so anyway. So I share with you some of my struggles and, um, you know, a lot of it too is my own human uh, just can't get out there to trim enough like I should. So whatever. All right. Let's see here. I'll find his pictures from yesterday and the day before. QRST. Looking for the V's. The Valor. Okay, Valor. Uh, you know, we could go through his his pictures of his feet. They look 10 different ways from Sunday. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, uh, I, I'm trying to get them to a certain place. And like I said, they keep regressing. But I think I know why now. And so now I'm going to get on it and I'm going to keep them there. And so, again, I'll give you the two reasons. One, the pillars. Two, the periopal in the back and the frog. Uh, three, uh, not trimming as often as I should. Okay, uh, you really got to watch those leverages. Um, they're going to take over and take your foot to a place you don't want it to go um, sooner than you think. So, you know, and here's the deal too. You don't have to do all four feet in one day, but try and get consistent. So I'm going to really work. I'm, I'm sharing everything with you today. You're going to see the state of my horse's feet, the back and forth, the up and down. And then uh, for the next three months, okay, I'm going to stay on top of it, all right, and really stay on top of it, really take pictures and really see if I can go back to what the direction I was going and finally get these feet in a place where I can establish them. Uh, Cause I have lots of interesting things going on with the frog too. See, here's some, I also had to learn some stuff about that frog and how it gets bound under and it will keep pulling your foot back, keep pulling your foot back. You think you're getting somewhere and it keeps pulling it back. So learning something about that and how that frog stay and them bulbs are supposed to be pushed up there. You know, and here's an example. Well, no, wait, let me show you this first. Um, just a second. Valor. Okay. Oh, no. I'm, I'm like, oh, uh -oh somebody's not muted. Oh, I'm going to make it over there. Besides, it's so nice. I need, I need to find out who's not muted and mute them. Just a second here. Unbelievable how beautiful it was. It's Tiffany, I think. It sounds like her voice. She's on. No, she's I'm muted. On. I'm muted. No, I'm muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It sounded like a beautiful voice like yours. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I can't find out who it is. It was like the perfect summer temperature, right? <laughs> well, wherever it is, it's summer. No. <laughs> is it Rochelle? Uh, Rochelle. Antoinette and Rochelle, yes. Uh, oh, oh, was that you that was unmuted? Watch us, which is hilarious. I mean, the deer. Can anybody no, hear this that? Is this is Lisa, Lisa, but it's Antoinette and Rochelle that are unmuted. I'm I'm muted normally. Oh, okay. Antoinette and Rochelle. Okay. Yeah, there. <laughs> okay, I think I got them muted. I still, I still hear him. Okay, so there's now I got to get Lisa. No, I was okay. It's still Rochelle. Okay, on the porch, on the porch. Eh? Rochelle, there we go. Aha! I think I got everybody. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm gonna reshare of the recent trim and you're gonna see again, the foot looks completely different, but but there's some, but I think it's looking different because it's different in a good way that a lot of what was going on with it got more solidified and stronger, even though it looks a little different and stranger, if that makes any sense. And one of the things that we're learning is, um, you know, when we're all doing barefoot, you, you rasp that foot till it just looks so perfect, you know, and everything. And it always had to look the same. And you always had to really keep it trimmed up, trimmed up, trimmed up. And uh, but what we're learning here is that you're going to go through ugly stages that are so different from what you were taught to think was the ideal, see? And so you just can't be freaked out at that. At first, I really was. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? But you gotta understand the whole internal foot is changing. So, okay, let me, let me share this here. Alrighty, so see what a difference can make in several days. Now, the foot to the far left here, I had uh, trimmed it the day before. I Well, I hadn't trimmed, trimmed it. I just went in there and cleaned up the white line and rasped the, the wall down to about the level of the sole. And I did not bevel it at all. And uh, then I came the next day and I did... Did I do this the next day? Did I do this whole thing the next day? I, now I can't remember. I should have dated it. But it was within two days that I did all this. And uh, I think I did this the next day. And then this is the day after that. So this is, um, these were actually on the same day. I finished the trim that I started over here. And then the next day I thought, well, I'm going to take pictures of that foot and see if anything happened. And it rained that night, you know, and so I beveled off the toe a little more. And uh, uh, I noticed in the pictures, to me, it looks like, even though I know I have beveled this, it still looks like some of that dishing in the dorsal wall came out. And I did something this time to the toe quarters here in order to try and trim them correctly. Now, see, what we're trying to get here is we're trying to get the wall to form fit around the foot and the sole to have uniform sole thickness. Um, and, and that thickness, let me see, let me annotate uh, to try and explain that. I'm also going to demonstrate that here with the foot I have and some clay, try and help you understand. Um, just a minute here. Okay. Uh, how am I going to do this? Okay, that thickness. Um, okay, so this is, how am I going to do this? Um, hmm. let me think for a minute how to demonstrate this. Okay, well, you would want thickness like this, same thickness. See what I'm saying? Under the foot. That's uniform sole thickness. But so this for sure. But but so this part of the foot here plays a big role, though. You not only want uniform sole thickness this way, you want it. Um, uh, just a minute here. This way. Uh, just a second here. You want that form of thickness too. In other words, this thickness here, you have, what would that be? That'd be horizontal thickness. So you want vertical thickness to be uniform here, and you want horizontal thickness to be uniform. Now, 
uh, I should change that because I did not draw the toe of the front foot the way it's supposed to look. Just a minute here. Um, okay. Okay, so you want, again, you want vertical thickness <laughs> and you've got vertical thickness, but you have horizontal thickness. Do you see what I'm saying? This would be horizontal. Thickness around the rim of the foot. Like a sole ridge, basically. Yes, the sole ridge has two forms of thickness. It has the vertical and the horizontal. What would you call that? The width and the height? Height and width? Okay. Okay, so you want to be able to trim that foot so that you get these sides of the toe here about as perfect as you can get them to fit in the shape of that foot because if you don't then they start to take on another shape see they can even just be slight you you could have just a let me undo this wait a minute okay because this wall grows forward and down Let's see, let me get over here. Right here, down, right to here. You want that to end right there on these the sides of the toe. Now, what happens is, because they grow forward and down, and there's a turn there, they grow forward as well. Uh, they're often tempted to run forward like that. Um, if you leave any of this incorrectly you create this number here where where are we doing right here go over here like okay we want it like this but if we don't uh trim this turn toe quarter correctly then we could wind up with it might start out it just be a little bit oh you stupid thing just a minute gotta get a different might just be a little bit, you know, like so. Okay, whatever, but guess what? Here's what happens. If it's a little bit there in there, it's gonna be a little bit on a horn tubule here too, like that, see what I mean? Because the, the, the horn tubules grow down and forward. And so when you trim, you're taking them up and back. See, like, like if I let this grow to here, then this is right where that is. If it grows to here, then it's right here. See how much difference that really makes? And so if you do not get the sides of this toe correct, then slowly but surely, well, this starts to have, you see my toe here? How it's just wanting to take off like that. Um, and so we really have to put more thought into and study and research into trimming the sides of these toes to make sure that we're getting uniform sole thickness, uh, uh, depth and width, or height and width, or whatever you want to call it, horizontally and vertically, because um, you've got this sole ridge here that's growing there. And it's very easy to start getting a misshapen toe, which like you see that a lot in, in a lot of these programs. Somebody's not muted. Oh, I guess then they were. Is somebody not muted again? I'm hearing something there. 
Um, let me undo a bunch of my lines here. Okay, so so uh, Denise and can I get some Denise. feedback on this? Is somebody understanding kind of what I'm saying here? Because it's not easy to describe. I'm struggling with it a little bit. But I think, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. What I think I hear you're saying is I understand the width and height of the uniformity, but are you implying that to achieve the pillar length, it's best to bevel? You, you achieve the length, the correct height and width of the, of the thickness by the bevel. Is the secret answer bevel? Well, um, 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 your bevel plays into it because that has to do with the height of your wall, you know, but also in learning. See, once you start getting the toe back, once you start getting some heels, once you start getting some sole, then it is a matter of managing this sole here. Okay of of being able to learn how to trim down soul because we've been basically uh inundated to not trim soul and uh so but once you start uh getting the this wall right and you start getting a soul ridge um if this grows longer if your wall is longer here and uh, let's see how to explain it. If your wall is longer, then your soul here also is going to be growing with it, and your soul is going to be out here. See, your soul is going to be out here. When your foot has grown, that's where your soul goes to because everything grows down and forward. Right here, especially. Not so much will it do right here in the quarters, but right here, everything grows down and forward. So the soul is also growing with the wall and it is forward. And so when you come in to do these feet, okay, we're, we're pretty good at getting, let me get, oh, just a second here. We're pretty good at doing the, the toe and bring it back here, like say to the white line. Okay, but then uh, taking down the sole right here is where we have a problem. And it's real easy to let it be a little higher than it should be. And it changes the shape of the toe right here. Um, to where, like, say, originally, this is what you started with. Well, the next thing you know, you've got, you've got more this. See there? And you think you've shaped your foot correctly, but in truth, the true shape of the foot is right here. Yes, you got your toe back, okay. But now gradually, the sides of the toe are changing shape. And I am convinced until you really get the front of this foot uh, in the correct shape, it's going to gradually keep distorting. And these, these horn tubules right here will hold all this forward. Hold it forward. They'll push your toe forward so that uh, you see the little dish I got there. See, that's all due to me not getting it quite right here on the sides of the toe. So I'm going to do this trim and I'm going to show you what I did to start trying to get that right. And uh, wow, I was all blessed because it just worked fantastically. Because here's the thing you got to know about these feet. They want to be in the right spot right spot and so when you have hoof distortion whether it's your toe quarters here or pulling forward or you know your your cartilages are being pulled down here the whole time internally there is pressure pulling everything back to where it wants to be you know it's like the example i give of your nose i can push my nose over to the side but my nose is constantly pushing against my finger because it does not want to be there. Same with my ear. You know, I can bend the cartilage in my ear down, 
But the whole time I'm doing it, it's pushing back because it knows where it wants to be. And so when we're trimming these feet, these feet want to be where these feet want to be. So when you finally relieve some leverage that uh, and some distortion that's been forcing that part of the foot into a deformed uh, position, when you finally relieve that, everything moves very quickly. And Linda, that, yeah. Sorry, this is Antoinette. That's okay. Uh, the soft spot that you said that you had in right in front of the frog. Mm -hmm. I, I'm experiencing that too. And I'm now wondering if it is because of the combination of those pillars with a little bit of extra soul right behind the toe um well one thing that happens right in front of the frog there okay one thing is when all these when this whole foot gets jammed forward that frog cream gets shoved forward too and forced forward and then you know all these tubules going forward and they're forcing everything forward this way. And it literally pulls your frog apex forward. And so a lot of times it's growing from an incorrect position. So then as you're trimming and as everything's moving back, that frog apex will actually move. Well, then underneath it, the, the sole has not been able to really grow there. And so you'll have a soft spot there. Um, because everything's moving off of that sole corium and it's coming unbound so that it, it, it isn't growing the right sole to begin with. Does that make sense? Or did I not answer that right? No, that, that what you're saying makes sense, but I'm wondering if just sort of like these um, micro measurements of excess wall and sole hinder all of that progress back I, I believe so yeah i believe so i mean anatomy is anatomy you know uh uh my fingernail if it's moved a fraction makes a big difference to me you know what i mean um and it's pretty easy to look at these foot uh, feet almost like they're just a block of wood you know when actually they're very fluid and 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 very detailed and uh, things like that. And so, yeah, I, I think little bits can make a big difference, especially if it's a little bit that you kept doing over time. You know, like um, you can really see the difference here as I'm looking in these pictures. Um, I can really see the difference. Well, now here I'm looking at a horn tubule that's right there. OK, um, so if that same horn tubule, you know, is running clear forward to here and putting leverage on the foot, you know, it you see the difference of these leverages, you know, um, let alone when it was like this. And, and I had actually. Look at that. See, so this is all going to make a difference. I think you're right. It, little bits make a difference. But I think we can learn to recognize those little bits. Um, I'm slowly learning it. Um, so I'll show you this video so you can see uh, kind of what I did. I did something a little different this time when I was dealing with the side of the toe. And I want to explain to uh, what I'm doing when I'm taking the toe back and then blending in the pillars, which I've been really good at, but uh, I think I've still been missing it a little bit. But this time, uh, as I said, I did something different there to deal with the side of the toe. Some of it was guesstimate, <laughs> guesstimating, um, which it, it's going to make sense when I show you this foot I got here and the shape of it. Um, how we have to learn to really get these sides of the toe. So let me push this back. Okay, so here's here's the foot. Let me stop share for a minute. Let me undo clear all drawings. 
And okay. Oh. I don't know how to do this. Just a minute. How do you how do I make oh pen? Nope, that didn't work. Quit shaking. Remove pin. Just a minute. Now I did it last week. How do I make that bigger? No, I don't want. I'm trying to make my little box bigger here. Hold on. Did you stop the screen share? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Just a minute. Did I? <laughs> How's that? You did good. OK. Did. OK, I, I forget from one week to the next. Well, you see how shaky I'm getting. And my memory's like going down the tubes as well. So anyway, better learn this while I'm still here. <laughs> I better learn it, OK? All right, so here you see, this is a front foot, okay? Uh, so, you know, how do we trim so we can get these corners just perfect? Because of course our horn tubules are attached to them. It's gonna make a difference on whether they push all the way back and push our heels up and uh, whether our, the wall in the, in the toe is able to stay back. Because, you know, if your horn tubule's here and your sole is a little thicker, a little higher right here, it's going to push your toe forward. Um, and it's going to pull everything behind it forward as well. So I got up this piece of clay here. I'm trying to make it the same thickness. And uh, I'm just going to set this. I'm just going to kind of put this like that. Okay, so, okay, so now do you see what I mean by you have horizontal, no, no, wait, I always mix it up. You have vertical and horizontal thickness to that thing right there. You have width and you have height. See what I mean? And so your width and height when you're turning around this toe makes a difference. Now, I'm going to do something here. I did this a little while ago and it worked out pretty good. I'm going to set this on the clay. And then I'm going to shove the foot down. Hold on. OK, now your real soul lips up over the outside of this foot here okay so that you have you see that little ledge there how cool is that on a real horse because you see how that that holds the foot in there and it also protects the rim of the foot and the coffin bone which is easily remodeled okay so that would be your real sole and then uh, you got your white line that connects it to, of course, the wall, the wall growing down. And so, yeah, you, you've got to have vertical thickness the same and horizontal the, the same. Um, now, when I say horizontal, I mean in the amount of wall, let me get something to point with. In the amount of wall or sole that comes out this way around the side of this toe. See, that's what we are not getting correct. And as a result, then these horn tubules also always stay just a little bit forward, like so. Okay, so does that kind of explain it better? Okay, I'm sorry, Linda. Maybe I'm being stupid today. But okay, so 
the soul, as you just showed it, grows up around the toe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, maybe maybe I'm just looking at this wrong or whatever. But if that's true, then how do we see the white line between the wall and the toe, or the wall and the sole? Okay, I'll show you when I when I do you this this uh, this video I did. Okay, great. when I trimmed. Okay, okay, but you see how I have the foot sitting here. You see how the the sole is the same thickness around here. Yeah. Okay, well, when it becomes a problem is when uh, something happens to where it gets a little thicker right here. And you don't okay. realize it. That's, yeah. Uh, because, see, here, let me try this. Even just a little bit. Just a second. Okay, see how I changed the shape just a little? Right in here, it's just a little thicker. Yep. Okay. Okay, um, that's what I'm talking about is that we've got to learn how to trim this sole right here and take our walls down on the sides of these toes so that we have that uniform sole thickness. Uh, not only height wise, but width wise, as far as it's not sticking out here by the side of this toe and changing the shape of the toe. How, you know how in natural balance, they got a square toe? Natural balance shoeing, Gene Ovenick, and also the four point twim, trim and a lot of them, they make a square toe. They leave this, they call it a pillar, because they think it supports. And so they leave this. And so they start getting this deformation here in the sides of the toe. Next thing you know, you got a round foot even. You know, there's two things that make a round foot. One, when the heels run forward, run forward down to here, that kind of making, making this distance shorter, that rounds it off. But then also, if the sides of the foot flare a little bit and the sole stretches out there and then the pillars, not pillars, I'm not calling them that anymore, the toe quarters here in the side, if they get misshapen at all and you wind up with the round foot like that, see, round toe. But this is the shape of that toe, not that. See the difference? OK, now, uh, since the wall is connected to that sole and it is composed of horn tubules, then the horn tubule that should have ended here is going to wind up here like that. Well, something like that anyway. OK, so anyway, that's what I'm talking about, just getting the shape of these toes correct, uh, I really feel it's very important and vital. And think about it too. Uh, you're out there, you're trying to get your horse to uh, go on a certain lead and, uh, and let's say in the back foot and he just doesn't want to. Well, maybe because you're creating a lever right there, you know? So, okay, well. All right, so I'm going to show you what I did in this trim. We're just going to go through this trim. And uh, this is something I really have been uh, trying to focus on and work on is getting the sides of this toe correct here. So that it's shaped like that. You see that? Now, this is the front foot. Now, already you know that if your, your toes are round, something's wrong. Okay. Now, something else that goes with this is uh, the measurement in the center. Let me get a ruler. No, I just had one. Well, I can use this one. Wait a second. Well, I just, oh, here it is. Okay. Okay, so right here we see 
Uh, now, when this foot was totally wet, you know, and fleshy and stuff before I dried it out, it was probably about two and a half inches, probably about where do you see this stencil that I made out of clay now. OK, um, and so we know back. It's blurry. It's too. Oh, blurry. sorry. How's yeah. that? Not much better. Thank A little you. better. OK, so most of these feet are about two inches Two and not two. wait, 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 two and a half or just a tad beyond that from there to there. Then over here, you see how they get shorter. That's why I did that. Now, the reason is just to help us. I did that originally to help me try and figure out and trim to the shape of the foot. This is why I do this thing here, where, you, where I have you measure here and then go over two inches here, two inches here, draw a line, and then uh, do about one fourth inch shorter uh, to try and get you so you are trimming to the shape of the foot. That's what that is for. Um, that's why also we don't follow the horn tubules. Um, what I do is I come in, I draw a line down the center, I go over two inches and then uh, at the top here, and then I go two inches down here and then I draw a line from here to here. It doesn't, you're not wanting to go with the horn tubules because the horn tubules could be distorted and out of place and much longer. Um, even though I have a horn tubule here, say, that's much longer. Uh, let's say uh, it could still be, the, the foot could still be the same height. And so I don't want to go trimming this down uh, that way if I've marked it with the horn tubule because I'm going to over trim the foot. You, this is why all this is is for, man, sometimes this stuff is hard to explain. This is just for shape, to help you kind of get in the general shape of the foot to help you a little bit. Um, that's all it's for. OK, now sometimes, as we said, this coronary band can be pushed up here. This coronary band could be jammed clear up to here and still have the same amount of sole. OK, um, that's why you don't necessarily just want to come in here and trim down. If let's say I have three and a half inches here. OK, and uh, I, I want this to be three and a fourth. Um, if my coronary band is jammed clear up to here. Now look at me shake up to here, I don't want to go and trim off uh, a whole bunch down here to make this one fourth inch shorter. What I want to do is just bevel it and start letting the hairline drop here the way it's supposed to. OK. So much stuff happens these feet. And uh, let me tell you, this stuff is not always easy to, to describe. All right, so I'm going to set that there. Linda, what I hear you saying is that you're changing your protocol as you're learning more. Yeah. I, because, yeah. Think, because even when these um, Zoom things started, we were still following two inches over from the center line and picking a tubule to follow down to the ground. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So, okay, so now are you saying measure two inches from the center line at the bottom as well? Yeah. Okay. But the bottom is is wider than the top. So should it maybe be two and a quarter inches or well, something like that? I, I do it in this video and you'll see. I go okay. go here two inches over and then go here two inches over. And you'll see that it's the same exact distance here. So no. Okay. No. I just wanted to make sure I was hearing correctly. Yeah, because see, okay. going according to the inner foot, not the capsule. Um, the whole purpose of this measurement is trying to uh, get your trim. See, all these measurements, all these things are ballpark figures to try and help us uh, learn the anatomy and get in the general vicinity of where things should be. And then as we keep trimming and we learn more our minds start to notice detail. 
and and then we can tweak things to be more perfect for that particular horse. So this is all ballpark figures type of thing um, to keep you safe. In other words, in, within a general vicinity. Um, all right. Okay. So okay. So we're going to go through this uh these videos so get hold on a second i gotta find them i had them all up here is anybody up for a potty break before we get into the video yeah yeah let's do that that sounds like a good idea okay let's awesome. come back here at uh 210 would that work awesome yes okay let's take 10 minutes that way i could get me something to drink okay thank you
Okay, I don't know if you can read this poem, but I really like it. So I'll read it to you. It says, one man awake, one man awake, that's the name of it. One man awake, awakens another. Uh, awake, not woke, by the way. Uh, the second awakens his next door neighbor. And three awake and rouse the town and turn the whole place upside down. And many awake and raise such a fuss that it finally awakens the rest of us. One man up with dawn in his eyes multiplies. Now, that means dawn means light, means you have understanding. Um, the worst thing to have is uh, understanding that it's false and to believe a lie. To believe a lie is a truth. And uh, another saying is sincerity is no guarantee for truth. So it's great to get understanding of anything and everything in life. And that's what we're trying to do here is just understand these feet um, so that we can trim them uh, correctly and give our horses the best feet possible and things like that. So anyway, I just like that poem. Um, not to be confused with being uh, woke and sleepwalking, all right? Uh, not that kind of woke. So, but being awake, uh, being alert, having understanding of a situation, um, that's what we're working on here. And like I said, you get understanding, you're able to help and share it with another person, you know, and, and uh, get them enlightened as well. All right. Okay, so it's 2, 2.05, so um, I'm going to find these videos, the second here. Let's see. I had some open. I'm going to have to close them and reopen them because I can't remember which ones are which. So hold on here. Got to check my muter, see, make sure I was on. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to go through the, I hope this will play videos. Oh, man. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to just, this is just a, an example, short one. I was just looking at the feet. Um, so will you let me know if it's playing correctly and, and it's clear and you can see it here? Okay. Okay. Can, can people see that? Yes. It, is it yes. relatively clear? It's yes. clear as day. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing in this video, just a minute here. The first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, teach people about uh, finding the true apex of the frog. Some, now, I don't do this every time, but when my toes start stretching forward or and a lot of times what's happening is the back of the foot's coming back and it's just putting a kind of leverage on the toe. And what you're finding is when these feet really start to correct, because everything's been run forward at a different angle, the whole foot is shifting backwards. And um, so there's been a number of times I had to come in and, and remove one fourth inch everywhere, one fourth inch from the apex of the frog, one fourth inch from the toe. I mean, everything moved. Because again, the foot is being compressed, right? So it's stretching out and it's moving and, and things are shifting. And so you want to learn um, how to find the general place of the true apex. This would be anatomically correct if we were to go in right at this point right here and go straight down. We would see where the true apex of the frog is. OK, but here's the thing. And uh, I have feet, I can show you on these feet here, these cadaver feet, that this is the truth. Now, um, the, the problem is that when you're standing there with a marker and looking in sight and your eyes are not correct, 
they don't see straight. It's real hard to see straight down this way. Kind of what I do is I'll come over to about there and because uh, I'll come over to about here and then I'll sight down kind of on the side of the foot there. But anyway, the point is, then you pick up the foot, you draw a line across, and that's going to show you about where your true apex is. So you can see if you're right on the money or not. Okay, so let me just keep going here. So this is what I was doing here. I, I have the sound off. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Of course, my big fat hand is in the way. You can't see what I'm doing there. Okay, so I was a little ahead. See there? See, it's hard to sight down that way. So I'm looking at it. I'm standing up there. I go, hmm, that don't look quite right. Uh, maybe I'll try it back here. And so usually I do this, wind up doing this, making two marks, and then I just use this as my general area in here. But see how I came closer? Okay, so let's see what's in the rest. Okay, wait a minute. What am I doing there? Ah. Okay, uh, that'll be on the next video. I'll show you what I do here. Uh oh, just a minute. Hold on, and I will uh, share the next one. Just a second here. Okay, stop, and now I gotta find. Do you think using a pendulum at that mark would help at the top so you know where it straight down looks like? It, it might. Whatever you can do, you know, whatever will help you. Um, and again, it's ballpark. Okay. And the reason I did is because I'm starting to look at, you know, I know, like you can see this now, right? Okay. Yeah. I know that uh, the true apex of progress don't look like that. Because when you trim that down and you get under there, you want to trim out some of that sole too. And you want to find where uh, it blends seamlessly. It'll go from frog to sole seamless. You won't have like this dirt line and stuff. Okay, so, okay, so uh, what I'm talking about here is just what I told you there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the foot and I'm going to look for my mark, okay? But I think before I did that, what I did, or well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm finding the mark. So there's where I had my two marks. Okay, and I, I felt like that one was a little far back, so I decided to use that one. But you can see, even with this one, I'm still right about here. So, you know, if, if I'm using this to measure my toe width, and it's stretched forward or it's even grown up and laid over the sole, then how much longer is my toe going to be than what it's supposed to be? And you have to have uh, your line in the sand. Now, uh, what I'm talking about here, I'm talking about this frog and how it's stretched forward and what I'm seeing in the bottom of this foot and how I'm seeing the whole frog stay that's been pulled under kind of come loose and the whole frog is being pulled back because you see right here, this is actually the base of the frog, but the base of the frog actually belongs clear up here. Okay, this little piece here that is frog stay, okay, it should be uh, been around and sucked up uh, more into the back of the foot and the bulbs because the frog gets very distorted when these heels get trimmed out. And so that's just what I'm showing here, how my whole frog here is eventually going to move back up in here. My heels will move back. My frog will move back. My uh, frog stay is going to kind of bend back around and go up between the bulbs. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to show is 
the importance of the first thing you got to do when you start your trim is find the true apex of the frog because that determines the general vicinity of where your toe should be. Okay, so then the next thing you want to do, and the reason we use a protractor is because our eyes do, you know, these feet should be symmetrical. Um, the same over here pretty much as it is over here. So when you're drawing these lines, they're not only for general measurements for the mapping, they're so your eyeballs can start to see and trim to symmetry. So that you don't have one side of the toe that's way blurbing out here and one that's way in, in further. You know, because you want to have uh, a balanced, that it, it's about balance. You know, it's going to help you learn to balance and trim uh, evenly and uh, so that you have symmetry on both sides. So now what I'm going to do is you want to take and you want to mark the center of the frog front and back and draw a line down the center so that you can use this protractor to draw straight lines. Um, I tried to draw a straight line across the toe without the protractor, and it was totally crooked. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to come up here and do then, so I'm going to lay that protractor in there, and I'm going to, I don't know what I was saying there, but anyway, I'm going to draw that line. Now, that's showing where my true apex is. Now, see these lines I draw in the middle of the protractor? Those are drawn so you can center them on the center line that you have put in the middle of the foot so that you can draw a straight line. See there? I can't do that with my eyes. And if you don't draw a straight line, because pretty soon we're going to come up here and we're going to draw a straight line across the toe where we're going to want to take the toe back to. And uh, if you don't take the toe back evenly, um, you're going to create an imbalance. And you're going to, it's going to lead to different kinds of distortion in the front of your foot as well. So I'm putting that right there and I'm saying, wow, my, my, my foot is needing to be moved back a lot. But that makes sense because remember the pictures? Like when we look at it here, it doesn't look that long. Okay. But when we look at what it looked like from the side, just a minute here, I'm going to try and... Uh, find that I wonder if I can oh well okay looky here see you it's longer than what it looks and why doesn't it look that way because soul view is often deceptive that's why okay so let me go back to this okay Okay, but that doesn't mean just because I mark that toe there, that does not mean I will necessarily take it back to there. Okay, this is all giving me information. And I'm going to do some exploring and I'm going to do some measuring to see if it's feasible to take it that, back that far because it's, it's kind of extreme. See? And uh, but if the foot itself is wanting to move there, that's where I'm going to take it. And and that doesn't mean that the horse isn't still going to be off for a few days. OK, but not lame or crippled for a month. OK, this is the foot. If the apex of the frog has moved back that far because the foot has shifted internally, then that foot is telling me I am ready to come back. But how I take it back and accomplish that and not make the horse totally uncomfortable, you know, because he's going to have to go through a transition phase there because everything has changed in his foot, the position, everything. And I decided in this trim, I'm going to take off next to no heel and I'm just going to work on the front of the foot here. Okay, so let's see.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find the true apex of the frog, but my big fat hands will probably be in the way. <laughs> that's, a, that's the problem, but you got to come in there and start cutting the tip out. Okay, I moved my hand to try and get them out of the way and see how I'm just taking that little bit of sole out there. Okay, there so you can see it. See, um, you have to get the dirt line out and you have to come back enough to where you're gonna see the sole and the frog blend seamlessly. And the true apex of the, of the frog is round, not pointed. See, I take a little bit of sole there. Now, sometimes if, let's see, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm a big fat hand in the way. Okay, so sometimes if you just haven't trimmed for a while and the frog has grown high and laid over here, um, then you're just trimming it back normal. But sometimes if the whole foot shift and the actual internal part of the frog corium shifted, which it does, and you remove this, sometimes you're gonna find that the sole is very thin under there and very soft, okay? But uh, since you're now uncovering it and everything has moved, it'll, it'll grow back in and it'll be, it'll be much firmer. And so my measurement was true. See, this would have been way too far right there. So this turned out this just better there. But see, I'm not just depending on this line here. I'm also exploring here to find where my true apex is. So see, I'm doing this two different ways and using common sense at the same time, you know, uh, a little bit, you have to use all three of these things. And he, he had pretty good soul under there. Okay, now I'm going to start cleaning out the white line. Just a minute. Yeah, cleaning out the white line. That's right around the sole and the white line connection there. Now, I have a lot of sole in this horse. You may not have a lot. You may not have, uh, uh, you know, but you can still clean the white line out there so you can kind of see where your growth is. You know, but you could be more conservative in what you do with the sole. But here's the thing. Once these heels start coming in, you got to start learning to manage the sole and figure out the shape of this toe. Now, you could have flares in the toe here, too. It could be pulled out from the foot. The wall could be pulled out from the foot. If you have a round toe, that's probably going on. So it takes some corrective trimming and uh, removing some of this stuff to get the sides of this toe wall to start sucking back in to where it's tight all the way around uh, the out, all the way around in the lamina there. Yeah, I see, I wish I could get a different camera angle so you can kind of see, but I'm just kind of scribing out between the white line and the sole. Now up here, just a minute. Uh, Okay, up here, right here. Okay, I'm not cleaning out all the sole in here totally. I'm just coming up around here and defining this area. And you do want to do that because you don't want these hooks staying on your heels, on your false heels. You want to come up through here so that the bar and the buttress are clearly defined and it's just not like a lot of times what you'll see is a funny looking hook here if people don't trim the bar and the heel right.
You've got to come up through here and define this area. Again, I'm not exfoliating all the soul here. I'm just barely scribing out around the white line, defining the area between the wall and the soul. Except here, I just, well, he's got a lot of soul in his heel. He ain't got no exfoliatable soul hardly there at all. But I decided I wanted to shape his heel a little better. Why is that? Because, because this area is slanted. It's not level. It's slanted. The wall comes around like this. And then the bar from here going down tapers downward so that this area between the wall and the bar, it is slanted. It is dished. It is concave a little bit. You know, well, no, it's not concave. It's more, more kind of a, a convexity, but it's uh, shaped downward like that. Because see, the bar here goes lower and ends at the frog here. And so the sole goes like this here. So if my bar gets kind of high and the sole gets kind of big and, and heavy in here, I want to reshape it to be more like the foot is. Because if we were to take and look at an internal foot, um, that foot is, is, is not flat here. It's shaped down like that. It's um, tapered. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. So I decided there I wanted to, uh, to clean that up a little bit. The sole is hard as a rock, even though it's been wet and rainy and soaking here. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and take some of the sole in this toe back and clean it up. And I think it was in here somewhere where I'm looking at this, this foot and I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to take off more in the sides of the toe. This is the part where usually I would only take off about the same amount that I might take off here. But I was looking at it and I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to take off more right here because I, I think my toe is slightly misshapen. It's more round, and I think it should be a little more uh, oval or spadish. So I decided that I was going to take off more uh, depth of sole right here. Now, again, okay, I don't know what your horse's feet are like. I don't know how much sole they have in the toe. I don't know what's going on with the dorsal wall. Is your wall jammed? There's a number of different things that you have to take into consideration before you do this. On him, you know, you can look um, at a, a dorsal view and you can see that he has no jamming in the dorsal wall at all. Um, just a minute here. Um, let me find you a picture of that. Okay, this will work. New share. Okay, look at the hairline up here. You see, this is the shape of the foot. It is the shape of the coronary band. It doesn't go like blurbing up like this. And, and look at the growth rings. I mean, they're a little wavy, okay? But pretty much they're uh, uniform, uniform shape. So you see that, how that goes like that? And then the hairline like that, that is what the inner foot is shaped like. And so I already, I already know this and um, see, and you'll see too, look at the, uh, what do you call that? I call it a compression ring. This is telling me that I've been leaving this too high and too forward. And so now what I'm doing, I got that foot upside down and I am have decided that I'm gonna ahead and scribe out the sides of this toe. And what you're going to see is it changes the whole shape of that foot when you take that out. Now, this goes back to the clay scenario there. How you want uniform sole thickness, this thickness here, but also the width thickness. 
All right. And so I'm taking some down, which is also taking it back. It's, it's going to do both. It's going to change the width and it's going to change the height or the thickness of it as well. And to be more shaped like the toe is the internal toe is what we're trying to, to follow with this hoof wall. Um, okay, let me go back here. Okay, just a second here. Okay, so see, I took that deeper right there where I scribed it out around that toe there and it totally changed the shape of it before the the wall or the sole was out to here as soon as i just took a little bit down it seemed what i saw was hey that's the true shape of the toe and this is telling me that i have been leaving my toe quarters long now again i I've, I've been working at this trying to understand this and perfect this more um but it was like yesterday it i just looked at the shape of that toe and i just went i don't think that toe is the shape it's supposed to be okay see how this is more curved now okay now i'm looking at this side and i'm thinking about taking some down here uh before that it was like this let me do an annotation here i could have left that Let's see, where is the annotate? I've lost my annotate. Oh, there you are. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so before the sole was up here. Okay, now, let's see, let's do blue. Now, It's more like that, more like that. See how that would make a difference um, in the and what your the length and the height of the side of your toe here. Okay, just a minute. Well, where'd my annotate thing go? It has decided to disappear on me. Oh, I see. It's hiding. Okay. So then I thought, well, I think I'll do that over here too. See, because what you're doing in these trims, you're defining the 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 parts of the hoof capsule that grow from the internal anatomy now here's what was interesting right there ah come on okay you see the red in the toe you know what that tells me that tells me that my toe has been too long it's been putting leverage on the lamina and that is uh uh, whatever you call it, exude or uh, wound serum or blood and fluid coming from the damage that's being done in the lamina leaching down into the bottom of the white line. Because you'll see when I'm done with the trim that that's practically going to be gone. So just because you run into reddish pink there does not mean that you're close to the sole corium or anything like that. It means that there's been some leverage above and it's been pulling on the lamina. And so, you know, there's some tearing and some blood and some fluid. And so the, the white line especially is extremely porous and it will just kind of leach down into the white line right there but you notice it was yellow the white line which is really yellow or gray uh and then when i took that one more swipe that's when i saw that let's see here okay 
And so I decided I'm going to remeasure the toe. You know, measure twice, cut once, uh, keep remapping. So see, I'm coming closer to where uh, that line should be. But here's the thing, you're gonna see, I'm gonna take off, I always take off these toes regardless. Um, now, here's another thing. When you got a sole ridge and you're doing this, you, as you do it, you're gonna have a sharp ledge right here. I always take and just kind of slightly uh, round it off so that it's not a sharp ledge, you know? Uh, to, because I want the sole shaped like the internal foot. Really, uh, you're training yourself. What the heck was that? Who did that? Where did that come from? Huh, I've been hacked. Where did that come from? That is so weird. Just a second. Let me find annotate. I didn't do that. Did you see that? <laughs> I don't know where that come from. I saw it. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've been hacked. Okay. I saw it. I didn't do it. <laughs> John, scribble pictures. <laughs> Okay, so I just decided I'm going to clean up. I'm going to clean this up pretty good. But anyway, now his soul is thick and his soul is hard as a rock. Okay, uh, uh, you may not have that. Okay. Um, okay, what are we doing here? Okay, here's what I'm doing here. This I decided, um, the next thing I'm going to do, because I'm trying to decide if I wanna take my toe back that far. So I wanna know uh, how much distance I've got here um, to see about how much I might be able to take down safely without uh, making him overly sore or something like that. Because irregardless, when you trim these horses, it changes the way their feet feel no matter what. I trim my fingernails and it makes my fingers feel weird for a little while. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Did you see what I did there? I measured that two inches, then two inches down here, and then down here, and then I drew that. And see how it's the same distance here? Okay, and so he was uh, about three and a half inches from here to here and three and a fourth from here to here. Yeah, there's three and a fourth. Well, about, well, yeah, about there, three and a fourth. And I can't see that, but he was about three and a half right to here. Yeah. So hey, that, tell huh? Sorry, sorry, I was waiting for you to take a breath. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Interrupt, please. And I want to tell y'all, interrupt. If you got something to say, interrupt. All right. When you're measuring those dorsal walls, okay, and are you measuring to the top of your bevel or to the ground? To the ground. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, it's kind of makes a difference uh, depending on how steep your dorsal wall is as to the thickness, whether you got any thickness of sole there, you can't really use this as a total determiner for thickness of sole, but it can help you a little bit. If you've got uh, real, real bad angles, like, like say you've got a, a 40 degree dorsal wall that's just sticking way out there, you know, um, then your foot's going to be really close to the ground. But let's say you got about a 50 degree angled wall, uh, you, your dorsal walls are fairly upright, um, then you, you can use that more as a determiner for sole thickness. But there's a number of things you use to determine uh, how much sole you have. First of all, you, you know that you have uh, uh, 
uh, Soul Ridge. Are you getting a Soul Ridge? You know, um, uh, do you have any depth to the apex of the frog at all? Uh, uh, how much, how, how long it, are your walls? Because they do determine how kind of how much soul, absolutely how much soul you have as well. And how much you can play with. See, because if you're doing corrective work, you know, what am I trying to do on this horse? I'm trying to get his heels back to wherever they they should be if I hadn't never trimmed them out. And the reason it's been so hard is because you're literally bending the internal foot. So the internal foot has to come unbent. The heels have been jammed up internally. They literally have to come uh, unjammed and and push back down the frog corium everything that grows on the bottom of that foot has been deformed and held by that distorted capsule and so you're doing you're doing these different things to the capsule to try and release it enough take away enough of the false stability it had in its distortion to allow the inner foot to move without totally crippling the horse at the same time you know um uh is that all we're doing <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> that's god bless it. you linda <laughs> you know <laughs> but but um but we know that as we restore these things and help these horses, they get better and better. Okay, if we can do this, you know, now if you're in a situation where you have a foundered horse with rotation, well, then it's 10 times harder. You know, this foot never, well, he got mechanical laminitis once when I was doing trimming from the top way back in 2007 or wherever. Um, but he's since then he's always had stable feet even though they were the heels were really trimmed out and they were hoof bound and everything like that he's never i've always kept a really tight dorsal wall on him and so he's never had laminitis and rotated but my pony yes so anybody that's going through that i really feel for you because this is not easy and personally me some of those horses come out of it um, personally, me, like with mine and my severe case, I have have not been able to to get mine undone yet, you know. So anyway, that's not to say to give up. Don't give up. Uh, more answers are coming continually. All right, Linda, this is yeah. Julia. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, while you're working on the um, measurements on the toe, I wanted to see if I was putting it together um, because of a previous um, conversation you had online um, about pillars and how we needed to shorten them. I mean, not, not bevel um, so much, but needed to address the, the pillars um, that get long um, in a different way than I had thought before. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, when you do the center line and then you go over two inches, that line down would be the, the pillar. Am I right? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I'm looking at is I, on this, I'm just looking at the shape in general of the foot. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, the, I'm trying and I'm using these things to help me determine how to trim. If I can take my toe back, um, uh, yeah, uh, it's partially for the toe quarters, which pillars I now call toe quarters and stuff. Um, uh, it's partially for that, what you say. Um, but a lot of it is I'm trying to get the front of this foot shape correctly. You know, uh -huh. because it's so hard to trim the sides of that toe right as well i do it so i kind of have a general idea of how much soul i might have so that i can uh know how much i can take back or down if i want to do some corrective work because when you're doing corrective work you you can't let that horse have a ton of soul you you i mean you don't want to strip it totally out of him but you don't want to let him build up uh, a bunch of soul when you're trying to get the foot to move. 
Do you understand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that, and that, that's even another discussion. I was um, looking at, um, oh, the idea of, of shortening, I guess you're calling them toe quarters now, not pillars. Right. So I call it the right thing. Yeah. Uh, so I was, you, you, when you have a hoof that has run forward um, tubules and they crash into the front of the hoof, you know, mm-hmm. the front, and you're trying to manage them, you know, so that they can move. I always thought, I thought I understood that beveling was, was the best way to go. Well, and yet, um, if I bevel, I'm, I'm kind of hitting them on the side. They're, they're so run forward, you know, they're not, yeah. uh, they don't touch to a point until they hit the, the tubules that are in front. So I was hoping maybe you could, uh, touch on that a little bit, um, of how to shorten those appropriately to make them effective and move back. When you get okay. a chance. Well, it, it depends on, let me find this picture real quick here. Just a second. Uh, where is it? Mm. A second. See, you, you, because this is a multi-dimensional object with multi-dimensional parts. <laughs> see, yeah. Um, oh, and of course, I looked under the wrong part. Just a minute. I wanted to look under pillars. Pillars. Well, the other interesting thing while you're looking is on the right front. Um, I uh, I had an experience where the soul kind of as a whole plate just kind of broke, not broke away, but slid off, kind of sloughed off uh-huh. and left a little bit of the old soul glued to the toe underneath, which made me think there was some laminar serum that was um, from a stretched you know, from a stretch soul maybe was gluing that piece on. So I kind of left it for a while because I wanted uh-huh. to, because it looked like the um, apex of the frog had moved back about mm-hmm. an eighth of an inch or so. So it looked yeah. like there was movement, which was encouraging. And uh, so I've let that kind of stay there thinking that um, new soul might develop underneath it. And I didn't want to make it sore make her sore yeah by taking it off too soon but is that is that the right way to think about that or should I take it off (laughs) um I think uh, you know if I don't know (laughs) I don't know (laughs) you know (laughs) I I don't know you could uh take it off or or wait a little bit or you know um it's a kind of it's a kind of situation where she goes out into a pasture that's hilly with, um, she's, there's a lot, she has a lot of movement out there, um, Mm -hmm. with several other mares and there's a bog that she spends some time in every day. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. So she kind of like moisturizes her hooves and then she comes out of it. Then they dry like, you know, clay, they dry and they're Mm -hmm. hard. And then in order for me to get to it, I have to soak her feet so I can soften everything up. Huh. But that's that's what's kind of interesting about um, and on the other end, um, the flares are chipping off irregularly and mm-hmm. um, I'm having to address that more on a, you know, every other day basis to clean well, that's, them up. That's probably good, though, kind of showing you what needs to be taken off. And what's yeah, that's what on. I was thinking is um, in some of the really the hind feet that she hasn't been very cooperative with. It's, yeah. it's actually bringing them up a little bit for me so yeah okay well great okay so I want to show you something here okay so so um what I was trying to do um just a minute here let me move something 
this is, I, I did this when I was trying to figure out how I should trim the sides of the toe. Okay, you see what happens here. Um, yeah. Now, yeah. on these feet, you see the, the hairline up here. That's the shape of the hairline. Why is that? See the inner foot here? Mm -hmm. Okay, see how it's, the hairline goes down like this? Yes. Okay, yes. the coronary band, right? Okay, right. look at the shape of the bottom of the foot. Yeah. Why, why should the capsule be any different shape? See what I mean? Right. So, right. so I'm doing these lines to try and figure out how to shape and trim that capsule. Um, mm -hmm. But but another thing they do, they kind of tell me how much wall and sole I might have under this toe right here, because they're pretty mm -hmm. standard shape from about two and a half inches from here to here. But this wall can jam up and shove this coronary band up to here. See, you could yeah, have, have the hairline the kind of going I deal with. high mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. that is when you bevel. You want to take them down. You would want to take like this wall here down like that so that it would be uniform. Mm -hmm. See, and I mm -hmm. can only figure it out by looking at the shape. One of the mistakes I made at the first was not realizing that if this is jammed up, uh, you can't measure that. Like say, this is three and a half inches. OK, yeah. but the wall is jammed up to here and then I go make it three and a quarter. I'm going to be taking it down to here. You understand? So you have to bevel the wall and give it room so that this jamming here will come out and lower this hairline so that it's once again like this. And then then you can start. um working on getting your shape better down around the side of the toe as well okay yeah that sounds you, like um it sounds like that would be uh a good way just to look at the front of the hoof then and kind of look at the hairline to begin with and then yeah uh, go from the and then then the beveling would i know it shortens the outer wall Mm -hmm. And uh, the softer inner wall tissue would be more able to move back. Is that what you were saying, too? Yeah. And, and sometimes you can bevel even over the white line. Ah, OK. You know, you want if you're wanting to, to get that down, you know, mm -hmm. you, you just have to kind of play with it. Like, anyway, you just have to kind of play with it till you get it. Yeah, my I have to I know I have to make that judgment call because um, some of some of what I want to do I can't while I'm I have to fear that it would make her more uh, a negative Palmer angle uh -huh. so I have to play with it a little yeah. bit there yeah but um, uh, yeah you know what I'm talking about when the when the horn tubules are running uh, you know at a at an angle yeah. into the front and yeah and, you and it even makes out, a crack. And it does. Yeah. yeah. And then um, like, like what I have on this horse, that's why I have that crack ah, in the side okay. of his toe. Gotcha. Okay. See? So I just have to play with that then. And, and I'm thinking to myself, some of that, you know, because of the, um, I, what would you call the leverage, you know, that gets thicker in that area, the, the hoof wall gets thicker. Yeah, I can. I might need to use some nippers to help me with that because I can file till doomsday and it doesn't seem like it gets to where I need it to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. So I think I'll introduce a little of that, but thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, dear. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. Okay. So anyway, so that all I'm doing here is I'm measuring this because I see everything. I wouldn't necessarily always do this, Okay, but uh, because I'm wanting to take this toe back, I'm concerned with how much I can take back and and not make my horse sore. So uh, I'm kind of trying to decide that there. All right. So but you see how the lines show an equal distance here. And remember, what do they do? 
they gradually get shorter and they must be in alignment as they go back to the heel. Okay, let's see what else I'm doing here. Chicken, chicken doing cleanup duty. Let's see. Yeah, see that crack? That was originally from the heels being trimmed out and all the horn tubules uh, at a lower angle, pushing and growing forward till they hit right there. And then this wall said, I'm not going anywhere. And it said, well, fine, we'll crack past you then. <laughs> that's what that's what they do. That's what a quarter crack is. Um, all that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely see that something funky going on in that toe. So, you know, bring it back. And then always notice that you'll you'll get a glimpse of this foot over here and wonder what kind of horrifying thing is going on with it. You know, oh, what are all those lines? What's that periopal? What's this? Now, what I like about that other foot is look at the shape of the cartilage. That's a really good, that is actually the true shape of the cartilage. And on my medial heels, they didn't, they're not as run forward as my lateral heels. Okay. Okay. Just a sit here. Oops. Okay. okay, let me see, just a second, let me kind of fast forward this and see what I did. Uh-oh, I'm missing a video, so hold on. Okay. I found it. Sometimes I uh, don't record it and think I recorded it and then I can't find it. And that's, that's what happened. So, okay, so here we go. Alrighty, so I'm gonna, I'm probably here gonna remap, remap things. I'm gonna map, go ahead and map my bars. Um, and get those trimmed up. And what I like to do is, is put the protractor right here. And then if you have heel, you can bring it up to bear, just touch the inside of the heel here and, and draw your line. Um, now I may do some tweaking, even though that's where I'm drawing my line, I still may do some tweaking on those bars to make sure that they're straight and that I'm still allowing uh, some room for them to let the heels move back, which is why like usually right here at this junction, like, see, you gotta clean that out, make sure you clean that out all the time the, between the white line and the sole and this piece of heel here and the bar coming right up here through the bar. And so usually I'm gonna have my bars be a little, let's see, let me do this here real quick. Even though I have this line to here, I'm probably gonna bring it over to here because ultimately when these heels come back to where they should be, it's gonna take these bars back like this. And so the point of not just having a bar that's right there smack dab to the heel, that you actually let it have a little bit of a ledge here maybe, is so that you're, you're, you're giving it a little more room, you're moving that bar over to where it actually should be if the heels were correct. So just a minute here. Clear all drawings and annotate, okay. And I thought I would measure my heels. I had like 
uh, I had over two inches, a little over two inches. And what I do is I'll put that right on the hairline and then I'll roll it up. That's how I do it. See, put it right there and then roll it up. So I guess I was right at two inches. A lot of times when you do this and you lay that bar, uh, well, that's right, because uh, I had rasped this hoof wall flat the day before. They're wanting that frog even before the the it's off the off the hoof. <laughs> I, I like to put marks on my my thing again. Measure twice, cut once. So oh, that's showing me I'm even back a little further. So you know I get a little nervous taking the toe back that much. Okay, so I'm going to remap this, redraw my line. So I have my eyeballs are right. And look here. See, I tried to draw a straight line across the toe by hand. And you'll see when I put my protractor up there and draw the line, I was crooked as heck. Again, you want to line these lines up right there. See, uh, to my eyes, standing up there, that looks straight right there. But look at that. So over time, you keep doing that, it tweaks your whole hoof capsule because you keep moving the toe because your eyes don't see right. Okay, let me go forward. So now what I'm going to do is... Uh, I, I marked the front there at one and one fourth inch since it was at one and a half. So I know I can take this down at least a fourth of an inch. So this is how I take the toe back all the way to that line. And as I'm doing it, I'm blending in the pillar, kind of coming over to the side here. So. Or did I, well, I might have rasped this down first flat. Or did I, I don't know. We'll see what I did. Okay, so to start taking off that toe, going to be bringing, coming back to that line. Now, you don't ask what angle. Just you're standing there and you're, 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 you're not contorting yourself. So it's not a, a steep, steep angle. It's not a 90 degree angle. It's just you and your shoulder standing at the hoof stand, uh, coming back on the toe. And see how I, I will go and start taking the edges of those, I call it a pillar again, see, old habits try hard, of the sides of the toe, the toe quarters. I decided I wanted to quit calling them pillars because of the emphasis they were making on them as far as making them bear the weight, thinking that they, they're supposed to be out there like the heel buttress bearing weight. I just don't. I'm just not going for that anymore. Okay, now, as I do that, sometimes I'll come in there and I will level the wall with the sole as well. Now, look at the red and the toe. That is from leverage on the toe. Kind of so level that out. Go ahead. What? A couple of weeks ago, I think it was um, Riza who was showing a trim, and he was showing so much red in that toe. Mm -hmm. My question is, when you get the red in the toe, how do you know when to quit going through it? You know, because every now and then I'll get some and I'll just rasp through it and it's gone and I breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, I know what you mean <laughs> and then, there. <laughs> and then other times I'm like, I don't even know whether I want to touch that, but I don't have any real hard and fast rule of why sometimes I say oh that's cool just take a couple more swipes and other times I go I'm not touching that because it's all just sort of I don't know 
intuitive, which I don't know yeah. whether it's the right thing to do or not. Do you have any, I don't know, a coloration of the way it feels? Do you have any way that you know that you know whether you can take go through that or not? If it or is, if Reeve is on, if he has any, because I was surprised how much he kept going through that. Yeah, if 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 the sole was super soft, like you thumb it, you know, you yeah, you know, pressure thumb. If the sole was, if it was super 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 yellow, like I mean, bright fluorescent yellow, <clears throat> I would not take that anymore. And I'm okay. not I'm not trying to get it out. I'm just trimming the toe. See, that's the whole thing. I'm not trying to take that that out. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at it knowing that that's where it's from. And as I trim, it may come out and it may not. I'm not trying to take it out. But you notice how it is more yellow. See there? Right there. See how there's more yellow? There. It's yeah. yellowish up here. Well, look, it's kind of gray up here. But right in here, it gets more yellow. That's because the, the white line has been compromised. And also because I am taking it down a little more to take that toe back to reestablish the toe in a different spot now. Right. You know, because the higher you get, the yellower that white line gets from the fresh place that it's, uh, uh, however it does it, squirting that, you know, biological rubber cement into uh, the soul, you know, to hold the well and the soul together. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, I'm not trying to take it out. It, I just noticed it will come out. And so that's told me that it wasn't nothing dangerous over time, you know? Right. And then I would see that the toe was long and I was like, aha, well, leverage, you know, uh, pulling on the lamina. Yeah. So you use your intuition too, but then after a time, you just, you know, kind of get to know some of it. I'm still learning too, you know, but I, I, I pretty much know I can take off some of this without, uh, because I've done it without consequence. But see, right now, what I'm doing is I have just figured that uh, I need to sh start shaping this foot more. Uh, to the shape that it is. Um, I thought I was doing pretty good before, uh, but then I realized that I was missing something right in here. You know, it, it might take a while to, to decide a, for a person to decide they want to take off that much. I mean, I was getting pretty bold right here. I was getting pretty bold and pretty confident as I was looking at the shape change and become more like what I really thought the foot should be shaped like. Um, and my white line is not real super, super yellow right in here. So I know I'm still in a safe place. And here I'm marking the white line. So I can show you the shape of the foot. So anyway, by doing this, by taking, by learning to define this area here, see, you also will wind up taking the wall from here to here down a little bit more, which is going to take the horn tubules back a little bit further. See, um, it all is working together to help the foot get into a place where all the forces in the foot that are pulling on that wall, wanting it to come back into place, they're going to be able to, to do that. But so see the shape? Would you say that when you deviate from the spade-like shape, then it's inflammation that causes the chain? Or, or um, Well, it causes inflammation. Okay. Because it's going to cause distortion and it's going to cause, like, like that red in the toe, that'd be inflammation. See, um, it, because inflammation from injury from the hoof wall being pulled away from the lamina. 
Okay, perfect. Thank you. <coughs> okay, so then I seen when I redefined that that I could take that wall down in the sides of the toe more. Now, here's the thing. This horse lives, it's been raining here. This horse lives in a soft sod pasture. Okay. Here's another thing I was seeing. Eh. Well, look at this right here. That showed up since last time. Now, the outside of his feet have been, at one time, they were very asymmetrical, way outside like that. Well, that's one of the things that happened from trimming the heels out and doing trimming from the top, dressing the wall down. Um, and so this showed me right here is a, if you see cracks in the wall, you can bet those are stress fractures from that part of the wall wanting to move or being weighted too much. And so, you know, I usually don't scoop the quarters, but in this case, this piece of wall, in the end, I took nippers and I just kind of nipped it down. And that's why when you look at my, my horse's picture on the side, it looked like I scooped the quarters. But I took it out of the heel. But when you turn the foot over and look at it from the side, it looks like it's out of the quarter. See, these feet just deceive you all the time. Okay, so I'm going to take down the side of the toe here meaning the wall I already already defined the sole and took it down and now you're seeing the true shape of the foot and so then i leveled the wall down a little more took that down a little more and now i want to come in here and i want to bevel this and what you want i want to leave some of the white inner part of the wall next to the white line in the sole but I want so I pretty much want this kind of a uniform thickness, except right here in the toe, that'll be rounded off a little more. But I want to leave a uniform thickness around this area, and I want to knock off the hard pigmented outer horn tubules. So that's what I'm doing now. So yeah, then the angle of my raft does change. Gets a little steeper. In this and, moment, you're beveling. You're not blending, right? No, I'm I'm beveling this outside part here, making it a little thinner. Is what I'm doing okay. now. Uh, later, uh, I'll do a little little bit of blending so I don't have sharp edges. You don't want sharp edges because they, you know, they overreach, step over on themselves. And that tooth wall can be pretty sharp if you don't kind of take them small teeth and smooth it out. So, Linda, several sessions ago, you were talking about you... Um beveled to the white line in the toe when you were mm -hmm. trying to get toes back and to the water line um, in the toe quarters and towards the quarters. I found yeah. that worked really well for me. That was a really good guideline. And so thanks for that. Oh, good, good. Yeah, that, that's just what I'm doing here. Now, it doesn't you look said, like it works amazing. It was, yep, it works really well, leaving oh. the, to the water line. Uh -huh. the horse that always kind of got a little bit ouchy after, uh -huh. just walked, walked right out on stone. So, oh, yes, thank good, you. Good, good. Okay, you. that's good to hear. Oh, there it says, drop a sweat. Okay, we we'll come back here. Okay, now. A minute. Let me put that back a little bit. See the shape of that foot? It turned out perfect. I was just so happy. You know, um, looks like a different foot, actually. It, it really does. 
you know, and I, you know, if you look at my, my foot here in my little picture, you can see that the, it's much more shaped like this front foot here that I had the clay on. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was really happy with that, the way everything was looking there. Um, and again, now I, I have scribed and trimmed stuff out. A lot of times what I do here, though, I would just rasp it down and take out some of the soul. I never really defined it quite as much. And but yes, uh, the other day, though, when I was doing this trim, I just looked at it and I thought, well, OK, if I take my knife up here and I take some of this sole out the side of the toe, what's going to happen? And I just took that out and I went, wow, it totally changed the shape to exactly what I pretty much know the foot is supposed to be shaped like. But it's so similar and close to the distortion that, that you don't realize it. And so it was when I took that knife and I just took that out, took that down, scribed it down and scribed that down that I was saying, hey, this made a whole difference. And then I looked at the wall and I went, yeah, and the wall is long there. And so I know since the wall grows down and forward, now I can take a little bit of that wall down. And then when I bevel, this is just going to give my foot a whole lot of freedom, have the toe pretty much shaped the way it's supposed to. And uh, things are going to be able to move the way they're supposed to. Because I wasn't liking what I was seeing in that toe you know, with all the horn tubules run forward and it's starting to dish out and everything like that. But it happens gradually because I, I've had it close to this before, but it's always gone back. Well, now I know. Now there's my phone. Just a minute. Okay, hold on a second. It's my daughter. Is Denise here? Yes. Hello. Can we get, can we get an update on? Oh, wait, Linda's oh. back. Never mind. Oh. I'm back. Okay. But but then we want an update on whatever that was. So don't forget. Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right. So uh, let me go back to this. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm uh, really happy with what I'm seeing there. You know, I want you to understand that in some ways I'm confident, but in other ways I'm not, okay? Um, I'm still trying to figure out uh, what is the best way to do and how to get this thing shaped like the inner foot and then stay there, so. You know, so all those things you feel and think, I, I go through the same things. Um, so. Yeah, okay, so I decided I'm going to trim up them bars now. Eh. Again, you got to get through all the layers of those bars. And this is all about keeping boundaries, keeping everything within a boundary. I decided then I wanted to shape the heel like I know it's shaped in the inner foot, give it a little bit more, more of a angle there. Again, you just get on that bar wall and you just follow it over off of the sole because 
what the bars do is they grow up and then they lay over the sole. And here, again, this is my asymmetrical side here. See? So the heel is a little more bent forward and things like that. So I just work with it as I can. OK. Anyway, um, then I'll take a picture. And I probably will come in and, and even tweak on those bars a little more so they're straighter, see, and going more to where I want them to go in the future so that they'll let the heels go to that place. So here, hold on. Oh, hold on. Daughter again. I may have to go, but this is Denise. Um, I did that horse this morning and I actually took a whole bunch of pictures. So I'm gonna do another video and have pictures posted, but she is walking. I was really hard to tell that she was not sound. So um, really, really, really good results. Awesome update. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for asking. So uh, yeah, I did take, we even took, um, the owner is right in there with her video camera. So we took lots of video and lots of pictures. So we'll share with that. It'll take me a couple of days to get it up, but I'll share it with everyone. It's a great news story. You should great. To see that that video. Thank you. Okay. I'm back. Um, okay. let's see here. Eh. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I just did that one. Okay, let's do this one because I want to show you. I don't know if if I if I videoed this. Oh, I may have. This is my little proxon that I use to clean up the sole with. Um, because I like to kind of just clean up the sole and encourage it to grow. Wait, you know see what you see. Oh, oh, wait. Just a minute. Stop. Let me uh um, oh, well, I actually might already did it and didn't show anybody. Just a second. Um, hold on. Uh, I seem to have lost my way in a multitude of windows. Okay. Share screen. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't put this on video because I only had one plug in and I had to plug in my camera because my battery run down. But I, that's my little prox on right there and it's got this little funny grinding wheel and this thing is so great for just cleaning up frogs and soles and it's variable speed as well easy to use i already used it though you can see the dust all over okay so I'm not sure what I come in here to do. OK, well, you can just see how clean, how that just cleans everything up. See there? Now, look here. I trimmed this frog, OK? And look at the different colors you see. OK, this shows different layers of the frog. When, when you get, uh, well, some of it is periopal skin. But some of it is, is a closer layer, which will get whiter. But if you get too close, it'll, it'll, it'll be pinkish. You know why? Because you're seeing it gets more opaque and it will show you your frog corium. But, but you haven't drawn blood. You haven't got in that close. But you see your frog warns you by changing colors. Um, your innermost layer. Uh, before it gets opaque, so you can kind of see through it, is uh, white, white. So anyway. And feeling it, feeling the frog, you know, how soft it is. Is it firm? Does it get more soft? Can you press it to the uh, point where you finally uh, 
where you finally you can actually feel the frog cram itself and and pushing in. So I'm here. I'm just again remapping my foot. And here's a deal: you don't have to all four feet in one day. You can do one foot. You could just trim the frogs on one day. You know, you could trim the bars on another day. You could do one foot one day and another foot another couple of days. You don't have to do everything all at once and kill yourself unless you're doing it for a living. <laughs> but this kind of stuff here, you know, trimmers that do this for a living can't do all this all the time and stuff. Um, you know, this is mostly for us that are trying to do our own horses. Um, now, a uh, trimmer can use this to double check things you know but they don't have time to what do i do this is my process see i'm palpating the frog see how because i want that frog to move because remember when we started this i showed you the base of the frog and i said this frog should come back behind back more um because i can show you uh another picture of a dissection of a frog corium that's been pushed way forward so I'm wanting this to come back. I'm wanting my heels to come back. I'm wanting my frog to come back, everything. So I took it um, down a little bit to where it's soft. -er. And uh, so I'm just kind of palpating it to see if it's, you know, is it going to move? Um, and I'm looking at my bars to see if i want to take them over a little more because look here this bar is level with the heel but this is not where i want this heel i want this heel to be able to move back so i'm going to change this bar and take a little more out right here bring it over and straighter this way so that it gives my heels some room to move uh, i believe that's what that does so Okay. And, and, you know, after all that beveling and all, you still see that she still has quite a bit there with the soul. You know, of course, now I'm going to put it up on a stand and, and you see, I took the nippers and I took that out. That's why it looked like there was, uh, like it was scooped. And it won that deep, which I was interested. But now I know that's going to give all those horn tubules room to move. OK, so then anyway, that was pretty much that trim. And um, then I just take a small teeth and I try and, you know, round off sharp edges and and all that stuff. So um, I think that's that's all we're going to do on this for today. Um, are there any questions? And then uh, is there anybody that wants to share anything or uh, have some feet we need to look at? I had a question. Um, if that, uh, those bars were really overgrown, would you um, go right to where they should be in terms of removing the excess material? Or would you do that over several trims? Oh, <laughs> it depends on how much they're overgrown. I mean, for one thing, when they get overgrown, then everything in there gets uh, mushed together. And uh, I would go as close as possible. You know what I mean? I would, I yes. would take as much as I could and go as close as possible. But then okay. the foot's going to have to, you know, grow and mesh and move and, and stuff like that. And just yep. at each trim, just keep keep headed towards the boundaries got you it know, it may be a little you know uh not totally right at first but as you keep doing it then they'll just keep straightening themselves out thanks that's what i was looking for i get that okay it's tiffany i have a question um from lumi's post she okay. has, um, she's working today, but I'm wondering okay. if we can go over. I have questions from her. To sure. Ask. Is she on the mentor or on the other one? Mentor, I believe. Otherwise, I can messenger them to you. Okay. Well, yeah. Can you messenger them to me? Yes. Makes it easier for me. One moment. <laughs> 
Let's see, I'm going to try and go and find that page. Um, now, next week, I did another video on the other foot. So we can go through that. We'll go through that next week because uh, I did a couple other things on that one. <clears throat> And um, I'd say uh, because I have soft grass, he was fine. But if if I was doing this on a horse I was riding, I wouldn't want to ride him for a couple of days, or I might want to make sure he was somewhere comfortable, um, not on hard, hard ground, um, or you had boots on him or blah, 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 because they are going to be a little bit tender footed. Uh, because not if I, when I do just a regular trim on him, he's not, but this was corrective because as you know, the frog apex moved back and then I had to take the toe back. And then I, I took down pillars, uh, toe quarters. I took down tour quarters more than I normally had because I saw where I needed all that corrected. See, so this was a corrective trim. This was not a maintenance trim. And so things in his feet are going to move. And plus, uh, you, I've taken him down more than I normally would. So his soul is, is you know, fresh soul exposed, uh, different shape, things moving. Um, you know, it's going to be tender for a few days. Now, if you took a foot like that and you took all that down, and you slapped a shoe on it, you could go run a foot race. OK, but when they're just barefoot, you know, it'd be like me taking my shoes off and going out here right now. And in, in, even in the yard, I'd be like, careful. OK, I'm going to go and find these. Uh, just a second here. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Tiffany sent these pictures. So we are going to look at them. It's just a second. She's got really contracted heels. Okay. Um, it's he's he's tough. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough one. It's tough. Um, there's one image of the back of the hoof where it looks like the hoof wall's coming off. Uh -huh. But don't freak out everyone. I don't think that's what was happening. I actually think that was a crack in the periopal. Yeah, uh, that's all it is, is periopal. Okay. And you probably got a whole new periopal growing on that bulb right. under, underneath it. So that's uh -huh. what my question is. It, when everyone else can see it, our question was, in which direction does the periopal grow? From the inside out or not just from the top? top, down? top. Okay, okay, just a second. Um, just a second, I gotta find the Zoom page. Doesn't wanna let me on it. Where is it? Okay. That is so weird. It doesn't want to let me on the Zoom page. Why is that? This minute. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, it's not wanting to let me on the Zoom. On the Zoomy app. That is just too weird. What is the deal here? Huh. See, I can find the little In thing at the bottom but it's not letting me on there. Huh. 
Huh. Well, this stupid thing. Hmm. I wonder why it's doing this. I may not be able to do that uh, because it's not letting me back in on the main program. Hmm. Uh, well, this stupid thing. What is going on? <laughs> Yeah, when uh, down here at the bottom, it doesn't want to let me on for some reason. It's got a glitch. Uh, okay, I'm going to sign a new host and I'm going to leave and come back. Okay? Okay. Okay, so Tiffany, I'll make you the host. There you go. Well, Denise, do you want to say anything else? Hey, Denise? Yes? We can oh. hear your blinker. I'm here. We hear your, your, your signal. Pardon? Can we you hear me? We're changing the signal. Your blinker in your car. OK, I'm back. OK. Oh, how do I turn that off? Sorry. Just, that you can just mute yourself. Okay, I put up the pictures, Linda, if that's helpful. Oh, that's great. Okay. Okay. I don't know if um, you see my arrow, but on the this little left side of these bulbs, it looks like what I thought the hoof wall was coming off. Okay. <laughs> and it wasn't. Because no, uh, just the, the periopal bulb skin. Yeah. How did you, you know, know that so quickly? Huh? So you, you knew that so quickly. It took me a minute. <laughs> oh, that's Okay. Well, it's just because because I've done so many dissections and I take that that comes off with the hoof capsule. That's mm -hmm. how you get the hoof capsule off. You 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 separate this right here. You cut. If I was going to remove the hoof capsule, I would cut this off right here. And then I would get the frog stay out first. I would put my my thumb in there or something in there and start just getting the frog out and the periopal skin off. And then once I get one heel started, it zips off just zip like okay. that. So, so then I guess that goes to the second part of our question, which was, um, oh, wait, I'll ask the first one again. The periopal growth, does the periopal grow from the inside out, not just from the top down? Like uh, <laughs> no, it grows from the top down. Top it grows, down. goes from the top down and it grows in tubules. Oh. Uh, now, some of it may come from the inside, but, but when it's wet, really wet, you can see the tubules. Everything on here is tubules. Um, so... So what happens is this got hard and, you know, you know, the whole foot is bound in here, right? It doesn't want to be. Mm -hmm. So somehow this stretched a little bit and uh, it just started stretching and the old 
dead periopal with the new periopal and then it just separated there. So would you just take a knife and remove it? Um, you could start doing that. Okay. I, me personally, um, it already, already, um, it must have some growth over the back of the bulb because that'd be like peeling your skin off, you know, so it'd be bloody. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, you could start doing that a little bit, kind of explore and see what's under there. Once it could be a, there could be a place under there where it's attached to skin and still alive, okay. you know, and then. Um, to you and everyone else, um, does anyone think they ever took too much periopal off? And if so, what happened? What are the indications to stop? When it bleeds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't had any major blood thing going, but it's skin, okay? And it gets to be like callous skin. So when you get close to, you know, where there's some, whatever those are, capillaries, whatever, you know how when you scrape your skin, um, just a, a little drop can kind of leach out through the skin. Um, that can happen. You, 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 you're just getting too close to, to whatever, and you'll start feeling it, and they'll let you know, okay? Like, you can pretty much do all kinds of stuff over here, and they're just like, da 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 But when you get too close to some of that periopal skin, and it's close to their bulb and stuff, they can let you know. But, like, sometimes right in here, um, you can trim it out and you might get a little close and, you know, get just a tiny little bit of blood or something like that. And they don't even feel that. They're just like, ah. Eh. But when you get back here on the bulbs, they feel that. See, because what I use, I got that. You saw that little grinder thing I have, you know. Uh, well, that hurts if you get, I've scraped my own skin with that thing. And so if I get too close to some sensitive something back here he he lets me know you know before i ever get you know get too deep or anything like that and here's the thing too if you're doing this you know no matter what you're doing that there may be a time when you're going to slip you're going to do this you're going to do that you know you're going to see a little bit of blood sometimes they don't even move it's like they don't even know you did it but you're freaking out ah you know uh and stuff um, but just know that that you, your horse will be okay and um, you're not going to damage them uh, permanently. You know, there's more danger of you, the knife slipping and you cutting a tendon in your hand or something than you hurting your horse pretty much. Okay, so like on this foot, like what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at the shape of this foot right here. Okay, and um, uh, I think she could take some of this down in here i think that this area here could be taken down to where you got a little bit of a sole wedge because uh uh this is gonna hold this foot right where it's at these sides are too high right in here oh oh you can't see what i'm doing can you sorry no but i think maybe you can try to annotate okay or or uh or I could annotate just a minute. Um, I guess I could annotate. Hmm. I don't have annotation permission here. Oh, I have no idea how to fix this. Um. Well, unshare. Uh. Well, wait. Let me get a picture of that. Wait a minute. Just a second. Escape. There we go. Thank you. That host. Yeah. I wonder why I can't annotate. Well, you're not the host, so how do I make you the host? Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, I don't know. Oh, um, is there somewhere there where you can give me annot? I used to be able to give people annotation permission. Oh, man. Too much power. <laughs> How's it feel? <laughs> I don't like it. I like hey, it. Hey, believe it or not, people get weird on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, this stuff. Wait, Zoom meeting. 
How did you make me manage participants? How did you? I, I laughed. I laughed and it said, do you want to assign someone? Okay, I'll leave too. Let's see. Oh, wait. Oh, I hope I don't mess this up. Well, if you do, we'll just be here next week and uh, we're going to really <laughs> discuss those, those feet because <clears throat> I really see where there's some shape to them that I'm looking at that view that is going to keep, they're just going to stay that way. Yeah, I feel like we go, or she, me by proxy, one step forward and then two steps back. Yeah. And then the question is like, when it, when it gets messy before it gets pretty again, and we seem to be in a messy state. I don't know how to give you back permission. So I'm just going to leave and hope I don't mess this up for everybody. Wait, how do I show that? Oh, God. It should ask you. Okay. It should say, uh, do you want to end it for you or for all? And do you want to assign somebody to be a host? I'll do my best. If I mess up, I'm sorry. That's OK. OK, now do I have, I still don't have annotation. OK. I, oh, now I have annotation. OK. I think I had to screen share to get annotation. And so she didn't have to leave after all. We're just so techy here. OK, so I should. Uh, are you back? No, it has to go ding dong. Ding dong. Let's see. Oh, she's back. Actually, you didn't need to go. I wasn't doing it right. OK, thank uh, you. You got to hit share uh, and then OK, so I'm going to take a picture of this. So I'm going to show you what I think. Um, just a minute here. What I think is holding this foot up. Um, now, another thing. Now, it doesn't look like it's happened in this foot. But a lot of times in, con retain, in contracted feet, you will retain soul. So you can imagine if this concavity area filled up with soul, then that's just going to hold that whole foot in a vice, you know, but it doesn't look like she has that. Oh, wait a minute. Let's do it like this. Save image as. Okay. Okay. New share. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Now, just look at the shape. Look at how the sides are higher than the toe. Right here. See there? Um, I need a, I ne also need to look at a side view. You sent a side view, right? Correct. OK, just a second. And let me get a, a side view. Hmm. OK. Yeah, you can even see that um, this is very jammed up in the in the quarters. So we know it's high. See? Yes. Um, let's see. Save image. Just a minute. I'll get both these images going here. Okay, let me new share. We're going to look at the side. Now we looked at at this, and you can see how in in the side of the foot it's high. Can you see that? No, we're on the wrong image. Oh, no, I mean in the in the sole view, the heel view to the sole that we're looking at. But we'll look at this one first, and then we'll go back to that. Okay, you see this here? Now, 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 you see how the hairline has risen? Right there, so that's, that's not from the foot being bent. Like sometimes the foot is just bent. And so the hairline is like that. 
okay? In this case, your hairline is raised here. Not only is the hairline raised, but then you have compression rings here. And that shows that this whole area in here is too high and weighted right here. So it's been jamming up. It jammed up pretty much as far as it could go here. And so now the wall is compressing, okay, to try and deal with the added weight and height of the wall that shouldn't be there. Okay. Um, so now we'll go to this one. Okay. Now, uh, let me get annotate. Okay. Okay, so this area from here to here, see it? This area in here, all this needs to be brought down. Um, I would rasp it down till I had hit the sole on the sides there so that your foot when you're looking down at let me show you a picture of a foot um the way it's supposed to be shaped when you're looking at it. now i know this is contracted so it's it's not going to be quite like that um but if we don't start getting it so that it's kind of shaped like the foot is supposed to be shaped the, these heels are not going to uncontract these bulbs are not going to uncrack plus of course she has to keep growing this here as well, this area here. This area here, we want to grow. Okay, from here forward, this this here needs to be taken down. All that there. Okay, um, just a minute. I'll take a picture of that so I can send it to you. Well, that didn't turn out very good. Hmm. Oh, there it did. Yeah, it did turn out good. Okay. Annotate. Clear all drawings. Um, okay, so I was going to show you a picture of a foot. So I, what I want you to look at is, see, we're sighting down a foot. We're looking at the shape of this foot, right? Well, just like when we look at the sole, how it, it, it should have a certain form. Well, that same form... Uh, we should be able to see uh, this in a certain specific form as well um, that we would know is close to the inner, the true shape of the inner foot. So let me go do this. Just a minute here. Hi, Linda. This is Lumi. This is, I'm actually just got done with work. So and this, oh, is, my okay. horse's, this okay. is my horse's foot. So I'm a little confused as to how to bring that down at, at right, right around the quarters and leave the heel because they're so, they're practically like, they're so close to each other at that, at that point. Yeah. And I understand. Uh, yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's just, you, you just kind of got to blend it in right there. You so know. would you suggest taking a few swipes at it and bringing the quarters down a little bit and then blending it in and see what I have? Yeah, you could do in it that, that case, way. All right, rather than just yeah, totally see, getting it to the live, to the, to the soul, you know, yeah. all the way down to the soul. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, no, you can take it, you can take it all the way down to the soul and you want to take it all the way down to the soul. Um, well, and you look at my horse's foot here, okay? Because I kind of got that going on. Uh, just uh, a minute here. I'll share this with you. Oh, and See? thanks, Tiffany, for getting this in. See there? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, you're saying, so you want me to float it out a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Because see, you're, um, if we were to take an, uh, the image of your horse's foot next to mm -hmm. this one, you're going to see it really jammed up in the walls right here, and you got compression rings in here. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. So we know that the wall is all compressed. So you want to take it down to the level of the sole from here to about here, and, yeah. and then uh, uh, bevel it and allow this to start dropping down some. Um, okay. I'm looking for a picture of 
this soul, let's see. Okay. I, see what you, I totally see what you mean. Once you okay. showed me that picture, I didn't realize you meant like actually floated out. Uh -huh. And look here. Okay. See the shape of this foot, how it comes down like that. Mm -hmm. When I got it like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at, look at yours here. Just a second here. Um, let me reshare. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Instead of coming down like this, it yeah. it goes high. Yeah. Here. I said, yeah. See, and it's hard too because since you do have contracted heels and stuff, um, it's hard to know what what you're supposed to look at or see. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, this all this area from about here to about here, that's all high. Okay, got it. Okay, and um, yeah, and even you can see uh, your wall just it, is, you're totally concave. You don't even see the sole ridge here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think, let me look at the, the bottom of the foot. Just a second here. I'm lost. Um, yeah, again, well, that, see? <laughs> even though he hasn't got the contracted heels, irregardless, the well, this actually, this is major unwind, unbinding of the heel. So that's why I've, I've been sort of afraid to do anything else, but like let the heels unbind. Yeah. So this yeah. was like, this was his like, his stiletto heel, or his, it was originally like a can with a, yeah. with a huge dish. So, um, so th this makes sense now. Okay. Um, yeah, any any area that kind of overgrows, it takes over. Yeah. You know, it, it, it happens in everything on this feet. Um, and so what we're just trying to do is figure out how is this actually supposed to be shaped? And how do I keep different parts from trying to take control? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Can't we all just get mean. along? <laughs> So. I totally see what you mean, because I think I'm seeing it when he's walking, too, that like I actually here I dropped the heel uh -huh. be right before this. And but then he's still got this like still looks like he's on on stilt. So I, I see what you mean that I wasn't looking at the quarters. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. What was I going to do? Be like on this foot. It can happen on any foot. Um, mm -hmm. A stupid thing. Okay. Be like, well, how come you're not working? Just a minute. I was trying to draw here. There we go. Still not working. What is going on? My annotate is not working. Well, oh. I grabbed, I grabbed, oh, I'm not on the, the right. Last... I'm not on the right deal here. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. no, no wonder. Duh. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So you see how this comes down like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So it'd be like if it went. <laughs> yeah. See? Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 I see it now. Okay. Um, let's see. Shut Let me up. undo this. Okay, um, I wanted to look at the soul. Just a second here. Because now I'm lost in multitude of windows mm -hmm. and can't find my way. Let's see. Um, let's see there. Let's see. Close that. Okay, I found, I found it. I didn't find it. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me share the, what I'm looking at. Okay. While you're looking for that, Tiffany, did you ask my periopal questions yet? Yeah. Now this this must have okay. been before before it did that kinda was starting no. to do that. Uh, no, was actually, this that's no. This is after this is what happened was um the first one is when I pulled them from the field and it was wet 
then I okay. wrote them and it was drying out. So what looked like it was like this huge crack when it was wet turned out to be as it dried uh -huh. this, little, this, this paper thin, like hardly anything. So yeah, I thought, I thought that was so weird that like, I that mean, makes sense. Yeah, like two hours earlier, it looked like the foot was going to fall off. And yeah, you know, and then here it looks like a nothing burger. Yeah, you see how much it, it dries up and shrinks. Yeah. See, that's interesting. No, because uh, at the first of this, I was talking about in my feet, one of the things that kept pulling me back was um, even though I was trimming some of the periopal, I wasn't trimming as much as I should. And it kept shrinking up and drawing the everything back together. Oh, and you know what you I know? didn't even notice is how much the frog had actually even the frog like shrunk, like, yeah, you know, contracted in between the two photos. Yeah. So. And and you see, the thing about it is when when this happens and and when all this is sucked up under the foot, then that periopal is sucked up in there, too, mm -hmm. and it will dry and wedge in there and just stay yeah. there. Yep. You know, Um but first, I would work on this part. Got it. You know, okay. you know, like right from here over to the side forward, because you you want to keep, you know, some of your heel here. Yeah. OK. Um, but let's see. Look at a soul view. See, look at all that. Look at the changes that are going on here. That's just really interesting. It is coming uncontracted and. And uh, you can see how the periopal just turns into a belt. Yep. And binds the whole foot. Yep. I've been carrying my rasp around, in a, a, a separate rasp in the car, and literally just horses that I work on. Even uh -huh. if they're, you know, they're not my, like, I do the body work. And if they have excess periopal, I'm just uh -huh. taking it off sort of without the farrier even knowing. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Because, yeah, because it's just especially when conditions are I'm really damp and it's just easy, it kind of just mm -hmm. sloughs off. So I feel like I, I feel a little bit like a, a cat burglar doing that. <laughs> but <laughs> he just sneaking, helping the horse behind the yeah. back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> OK, see, here's the here's the inside. We looked at the 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 lateral side, but look, you got the same thing going on here. See the compression okay, yeah. from this yep. being too high there. OK, OK, um, let's see here. So do you think that like if 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 the um, if the heel is like un unwinding and it's in its as it's spreading, it's 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 lowering itself, then it since I didn't take care of the quarters that, that that's just happens to leave it high like that is because this is not something I ever did before um, or ever had to do. Can you say that again? Cause I spaced out. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Yeah. So if, if the heels are decontracting, then I assume that sort of brings it down. It, it brings it down a little bit. It changes that. It changes the angle a little bit. And if I don't adjust, so if I by not adjusting the quarters for the last several months to go along with it, then that's why I'm having this problem. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. part of it. Okay, but so if you look at what is going on at, at, at back in April, like there, yeah, that's what we typically would do is mm -hmm. bring. It bring the uh, bring the wall down to the soul, and I guess we just hadn't been doing that. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere along the line, you stopped. I, I mean, I go through the same stuff. You know, I'll be going okay. in a good direction, then I quit, and then I'm going, "What happened?" You Got know. It. All um, right. I don't. Yeah, I was just. I was just mesmerized, but I guess by the back of the foot at this. Oh, yeah. For the last few months. OK. Yeah, I, I totally can can relate. See, and even here, I don't know if you're quite taking it back as down as yeah. much as you should have right in here. I see, see what you mean. Mm -hmm. And okay. like there's another picture here. Wait a minute. And, and it's is it this horse's back feet? No, Not it's his, it's it's his front. OK uh so those are back feet there are these his back feet 
Yes. Okay. We'll see what we did today. It really applies to this because back feet are way more spade shaped. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, yep. defining, coming in there, cleaning out this dirt line here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and kind of defining the sides of his toe a little yep. more, thinning down his frog here, getting it yep. out of the collateral groove, uh, forming him some sort of sulcus. Yep. See, mm -hmm. my horse, I, I didn't trim his back frogs forever. And then uh, when I, and so he had no central sulcus at all. They were just flat. And so then I had to start making a central sulcus in them. So stuff would start moving, mm -hmm. you know. Um, is this way, Tiffany, I'm not sure which, what you sent her. Is this, this is actually like a before. Months ago. That, yeah, that this is, that. yeah, this is before I start like. I just had started taking out the bars and just had oh, okay. started trimming out the frog. Oh, is the okay. Is there a second photo with I'll this? Send her, that was from the- Oh, no, that was, that yeah, was before. Uh, hold on. Okay. Do you, and do you have a sole picture of that contracted foot we just looked at? Hmm. Now, see, when I would look at that, I would look at that and draw a line down the center. Yeah. And then I would take off some here and I would make the sides as symmetrical as I could. Sure. You sure. know? Yep. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, this is not. This is before we trimmed it okay. up. And but yeah, you can see like I, they like, I think I sent this to Tiffany to show her that like how much I've been digging out of the um. Mm -hmm. dig, I just like see you yeah weren't... digging out the frogs frog yeah. there because I I'm surprised how much. I can take of the frog, and there's yeah. still more. There's actually still more to go, especially. Yeah. Uh, by the heel buttresses. It, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still over the bar there. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, where am I? Um, I just sent the most current picture of this hoof. Um, okay. okay. And did you have a sole picture of that contracted foot? I can oh, send one to Tiffany. Thanks. Because that's it, yeah. Oh, wait, oh yeah, that's, that's looking much better. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, see Tiffany, how, there's a see how yeah. these bulbs are wanting to break away from that that distorted uh, frog stay I, growth. Yeah, and I sent this to Tiffany because I had just taken off a flap off the frog and found the heel bulb like like layered under like underneath it, buried. Look at that, so, yeah. Yeah, so I, I definitely like, and for years I was wondering why my the frogs were so raggy, and I realize mm -hmm. now that like they've just been layering on top of each other, like the the heel bulbs have been going underneath, and the frog just keeps trying to find some place to go there. Yeah. And so yeah, like talk about walking on your heels. Like he literally, at that point in the frog, he's walking on his heels. Mm -hmm. It's just it's it's crazy. So. Um, but I can, you know, I don't know how much hope there is for this foot, but oh yeah, lots. Yeah, but it's definitely like I mean, I think I, I think we, I've sent this foot in before, and it, it, it's, it, it seems very lamentable. Everyone was like sighing. Oh, but, no, um, no, my, my horse's feet were as bad. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I mean, not good, but yeah, and <laughs> good, I see, good, bad. But I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, right. I see what you mean about um, tightening it up. I, I'm a little, I get nervous about like taking the frog and then going for the wall and the bar all at the same time. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, so I kind of just do the frog and the bar when, when it's wet enough mm -hmm. and then I'll leave, I leave the, the wall for like, I mean, I can do the wall at any time, you know, it, it can, they can be rock hard and I can still do the wall. Um, so, Okay. Um, but is is that a problem if you do like if you're doing it piecemeal or would, is it much no, better like like you how can do you do it piecemeal whatever whatever you're comfortable with you'll get more comfortable later okay. on doing different things you know um you'll get so you can define things better like even here like if i were to come in and do this frog i would be taking off this much yeah i know i can see that um Prob probably yeah you know um uh, but you're doing you're doing okay, and I would come up here and I would just try and clean out this mm -hmm. 
this line here, see what's going on. Uh, see, yep. you'll have to watch the first part of the video where sure. I talk about defining uh, the sides of the toe here. Yep. You know, uh, I, I got some notes from Tiffany about how you you uh, you went on a tear about uh, getting everybody <laughs> <laughs> getting yeah. it, uh, tightening the wall to the um, to the white line yeah. a little bit better and defining yeah. that defining the shape of the foot so that because everybody's walking around with moon shaped feet. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Where do I undo this? Okay. Um, just a minute. Now, did you send her a picture oh, of yeah. that? Tiffany, okay. isn't there one in the shared album? Okay. What am I looking for? Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, um, soul, soul view of the left front of the um, of the high heel. Left front. Let's see. I don't think there is. What did you call him? The uh, high heel? The high heel. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? There isn't a very recent. There's a, you there think he has ones. a high heel? This is his there, high heel, yeah. Yeah, the contracted one is, it, 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 it's a very high heel. Um, you could send her, like, send her one of the older ones. It's not, it, it's, it's only from about a month ago, Thanks. if you want. You can send a soul view. I mean, it's not, it's not totally current. Hmm. I feel pressure again. Oh no, no, that's right. No, no, that's from February. Actually, it's weird. I okay. Let me let me look. Sorry, guys. Um, let me see what I did. If you text it to me, I can pop it over. Okay. Yeah. Because I think I marked up stuff. Okay, this is unclean, so I apologize, but that's okay. Um, this is from August 4 and sent it to you, Tiffany. I'm coming. Hold on. Let me get back to Facebook. Uh-oh. Linda, don't get mad. <laughs> Why are they dirty? It's dirty. Really it's dirty. dirty. Oh, that's okay. This is clean July 27. The dirty <laughs> dog. Yeah. I know. I mean, some, you know, some days it does something and I just, I just, you know, um, I'm packing him up, but I want to remember what it looked like. And so it'll be dirty. It's, okay. It's, it's, Here's a more acceptable. Acceptable. <laughs> hey, hey, I've seen feet on this, on this board. On oh, this I see Facebook it. Oh, page. that's not yeah. bad. <laughs> that's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse than that. I know. I'm not that ashamed. Of okay. Yeah. Yeah, here you can you can really see the 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 sides are high and yeah. Uh okay. Okay, you you've cut you've trimmed the bars good here. Good map and job. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah, okay. I just wanted to check it out there. Okay, okay great. Well, is Thanks there anything input. else? You're welcome. Anything else? Well, I think t um, Tiffany said you guys already had the discussion about periopal, and I want to know like how far is too far and like blood. all of that. So said blood. <laughs> blood? Really? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Well, how do you? Is there? Is there? Do you see? Do you see like that? Take, that blood. For now, you know, take, like, uh, soak the feet and take what you feel comfortable with. Anything okay. that's flappy or super thick or okay. unusual and right. clean the central sulcus out very good and uh -huh. the collateral groove exits. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, okay, and I, I don't I, know I if guess... Reza is still here, but he, he also has a video. Have you watched his video? Oh, I've watched a few. What, which one are you referring to? He has a video on trim and periopal. Oh yeah, I send that. I've been. I, I try to send that around. If he if he could put that on YouTube, it'd be great. So that um. Okay. So I some will. of my yeah, some of my clients. I've been because I've been sort of trying. I, I mean, nobody here does this, and even my own trimmer. She's you know she's watching me do this, and she has uh -huh. a question mark, and I know she's actually taken a few tentative swipes yeah um and so um you know it's it's not like i've taken away all the trimming responsibility from her but i take but i i've sort of gone off on my own tear with yeah. some of this stuff and yeah. um so i think she's willing to learn so i'm just trying to like change the culture a little bit yeah one well, that's great. now where are you at 
I'm in, I'm in Long Island. I'm where t- I'm where Tiffany used to live before she okay. before she turned into a farm girl. <laughs> um, okay. But we're like we're we're like we're suburban horse owners out uh-huh. here. Um, yeah. So do you keep your horses with you at a place, or do you have to keep them at a stable? Or I'm it, yeah, mine actually. I have. I have mine at a facility that's a, about 10 minutes away from me, but okay. it's, but the, it's, it's probably one of the biggest, like, as far as open space, it's one of the biggest barns on Long Island. So he's oh. in a, he's turned out in a 30 acre field. Yeah. Oh, that's seven. great. That's great. So, yeah. Um, and he's on grass, which is good because a lot of these changes every so often he gets like, I think I, I, I think everybody here, like, got you guys helped me once when I I took too much toe on this on this Uh foot and um and he was pretty sore for about two weeks so so being on grass has been really helpful because he can move around and not not be like limping around um because Long Island is a pile of rocks that's oh yeah yeah so everything here is very rocky but anyway um yeah I guess that's about it Um, you know the other thing on those um those hind feet where the bars are super laid over like uh-huh. i fr- as i'm trying to thin those bars i frequently hit blood i frequently make him bleed um uh-huh. so what is it because the corium is that uh, his his soul uh, is that thin at that point and it, the corium is is that close or am i just tear is are the tubules that i'm sort of it, disrupting because i can't always get my knife oh, and just take yeah take the, the whole thing so if, am i just dropping tubules and it's making it bleed no no if if you're if you're uh if it bleeds then you're just close to the corium okay so that tells you how thin the soles are back there then right yeah okay got it all right okay well hey That's about it. is so who did we end up with here hey linda yeah Hi, it's Adria Kennedy. Hi. Hi. So I was wondering if you um, wouldn't mind talking about my daughter's horse, the um, horse that I posted the photo of the crack in the heel. Okay. Do you, I don't know if you remember. Uh, yes, I do remember. Yeah, I posted it this week and I actually put up some more. She sent me some more photos. She's down in Florida. I can't get my hands on the horse myself. So I'm, this is all long distance. Okay. Um, and so I just thought, I just wanted to really make sure that I understand because I'm, I'm going to be working from telephone with the farrier and, um, okay. and so if you could go on, I, I don't know how to do it, but, um, I posted a bunch more photos and I, I put it under your last comment on that okay. thread. Okay. What, um, what, which page was that on? It was, was the that... mentor. It was the okay. mentor page. Yeah. Okay. And, uh. Okay, uh, how do you spell your name so I can type it into the search it's engine? A D R I A. Okay, and your last name is Kennedy K E N N E D Y. Okay, okay. <clears throat> that way I can type it in. Mm-hmm. And okay, I have it here. Well, I was supposed to have it. Yeah. The stupid thing. And for some reason, I'm like the what i'm looking at is i'm only seeing the very top of the screen i don't know why that's happening <clears throat> um just a minute and i'll reshare and I'll probably find it here okay okay. This time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay just a second here okay this one do you see it now no i don't see it oh there we go yes that's it yep okay mm-hmm. okay and so if you go down in the thread um, the very last comment that you sent, I sent, I, I attached, I replied with more photos. Okay. Um. Hmm. If you keep going down the end, I think it's a, you got to keep going. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep okay. going. Because you posted twice but uh, but I yeah I added hmm. right okay. there I think yeah see this way I hate Facebook the way it's yeah, formatted because you just mm-hmm. lose track of stuff 
Yeah. You know, so there's a just, bunch more. There's a bunch more photos there too. So if you go up, see how there's six more replies. Uh, all it, those, see how easy all of, it is to miss that. You know, all of those are photos because I had you to know? do them individually. Yeah. Okay. Just a minute here. Um, now, did that come up? Yes. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it, it's kind of superficial wall. Now, what I, but it could, it's like a fingernail that gets yeah. busted off, but it's attached to something that's on something live as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, look at how this is higher. I know. Up I can here, see that then here. this yeah. hide here. Yeah. Um, but I'm, if you look at the side, if you look at the lateral medial versions, and my daughter took these photos, so I, you, you, they're a little off, but he has like a stress line, um, and that's right where the crack is. So I just wanted you to take a look at that because it's really interesting. Okay. So if you look at the rest of the photos, you'll see them. You'll see what I'm talking about. Is it the back? Oh, I see what you're yeah, talking you see, about. It goes all the way around. Yeah. The first line. But then if you look on the medial side of that, you'll see it there too. So this is, he moved from Massachusetts to Florida two months ago. Mm -hmm. And that's about two months worth of growth right there. Yeah. So that's the stress of the move. But see how the crack is right on that yeah. stress line? Yeah. It's going to take the weakest. Well, first mm -hmm. of all, the, the hoof capsule is distorted right you know so it's not fitting on the foot correctly so you're going to have leverages and stress where right um there shouldn't be any let me look at some more okay and this guy was barefoot and i was trimming him mm -hmm. until two, two years ago using tack until two years ago when uh -huh. my daughter started moving up and eventing and they you know her trainer was like he's got to be in shoes because we got yeah. We have to put studs in. And so I, you know, off he goes to multiple farriers since then. And mm -hmm. I haven't really been able to keep close tabs since yeah. then. Yeah. I, I personally think, you know, I mean, I don't know what you can, what all you can do for him and, you know, working with the farrier and stuff. But I personally think that he, he needs, uh, support shoes, yeah. like, like, uh, uh, like ground control shoes with some support, frog support. Okay, ground. You know, yeah, some sort of composite shoe that has isn't just open behind. Yeah, and that's and a, he yeah. it can support the whole back of his foot. Like, yeah. I, uh, who out? Who is in there? Somebody here that shoes. Reza, are you awake? <laughs> <laughs> He must be asleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this horse needs some composite, good composite shoes with full frog support and even some pour in like dental impression material. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. He, you know, just the back of this open like that. Eh, yeah. You know, putting too much pressure on the walls. See, that's yeah. why you're getting that compression ring. That is a compression ring. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, like, um, let's see. Uh, what are some, who knows some kind of shoes? Um, let's see. See, I use these whenever I do happen. Right. Okay. But there's better ones than these. There's lots better ones. Um well, where are they? Oh, horseshoes, ground control horseshoes. Just to give you an idea. Um, and, and still, even these would be great. Let's see. Um, new share. Oh, I guess I'm sharing. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Yep. See? Mm -hmm. You know, see how there's uh, support. For, but you can get better ones. Um, I'm trying to think composite shoes with frog composite. And how do those, are those nail on or are those glue on? No, these are nail on. Nail on. Okay. Shoes. shoes how do you, with, how do you shape those shoes though? Um, you don't really have to shape them. Okay. You have to say for horses. Yeah. 
um, composite, no, composite okay. horseshoes. I keep putting <laughs> with frog support. Oh, yeah, okay. Like Easy Shoe has some. Uh, easy Shoe, Easy Shoe. I always go to images and see what's going on. Um, with and like dental impression material, like something like even even if they use metal shoes, but they put something, a pad in there with frog support and uh, filled it up with some dent. Well, see, Vet Tech makes this stuff that's infused with copper sulfate. Yeah. That's great to use as a filler in there. You trim the frogs really good and then put that in there. And it keeps them from getting thrushy because, you know, they're kind of closed off, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. There's some with... Uh, what what do they got on this guy? Oh, that's a tiny picture. I'm mm -hmm. just looking to see what they got. It's been a while since I looked. Um, well, so talk to Epona me shoes are great. Uh, yeah. Eponas are great shoes. Are those um, nail on? Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah. ironically, though, you were talking about like... Um, the part, the discussion that I missed about spade versus like, the, the round foot. And I'm seeing all, all these, all of these composite shoes and they're all they're round. round. Well, That's we can't have, have everything. <laughs> and we've got to be able to put studs in them too. Damn it. Because she's, <laughs> yeah. she's inventing with them. So <laughs> yeah, we can't have everything. I, yeah. know. I know. So talk to me a little bit more about the compression ring. So I know more about that because I just thought that that was a stress thing from his, what he'd been through. So well, it, it's it's stress, but it's compression too from the wall being weighted, and then the wall is dovetailed to the sole, and it slides down through the sole and out where it gets cut off like a fingernail, you know. And yeah. so since it's dovetailed like a you know when they put drawers together and things in a dovetail thing slide, right? Um. And so when it's too weighted and there's stress or whatever um, and or leverages or things like that, then the wall gets pushed back up. Well, then it, it, it buckles and forms a compression ring, which is like a laminitis ring. Yeah. Which is what those are, too. You know, um, so it could it could be some of both of that. It was stress along with. Um, the wall being uh, weighted do think, and do you think he has separation along there along from those rings um well I mean there would be some damage up in there it looks mm -hmm. like uh, uh, also uh, if they go stress and they have a bout of laminitis they can get those rings as well yeah okay. um, so anyway that I I would have a, some sort of shoe put on him mm -hmm. you know with some support support yeah because yeah. did you see this i just saw this picture yeah this. see that now look at this see how they've got that horse on its bulbs i don't yeah. know what what yahoo this is oh shoeing with the heart and the head or oh, whatever you know, mm -hmm. you, ain't, you may be shooting with your heart, dude, but you ain't got no head into this mm -hmm. because well, you don't want them on their bulbs like that. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it's interesting when you look at the picture, you can clearly see how the heel broke off at the same level of the other heel. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like clear, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that 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 heel is so much longer now. My question is, is it looks like it is longer and not just run forward. So it, it looks like it's actually, there's more height there as well. And I then, think and so. Jam, and it's just jammed up. Yeah. And you got some new heel growing in. Yeah. And I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at now. <laughs> Try, trying to go back mm -hmm. to your pictures here. Uh, Hi, Linda. Hey. I have sent a couple of pictures in Messenger about uh, um, different shoes that I use. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Let's see here. 
Ah. Oh, we've got all kinds of goodies here. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Well, first of all, here, we'll just go through them. Do you see that there? Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, do you want to describe what you got here going here? And uh, tell me when to switch pictures, and I will, Riza. Okay. Um, what we've got here is uh, you see the two parts on the top. It's an A and a B. It's like a catalyst and the, and the base. Uh, that's a dental impression material that you mix together, uh, basically um, uh, half and half, you know, basically equal parts. And then, uh, I mean, it gives you a couple of minutes before it sets into a nice rubber pad. Oops. Sorry. Uh, no, that's a different one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and the shoe that I've got there, is a um, it's a it's a normal normal shoe. What I've done is I've, I've trimmed the I've trimmed the foot first, and then I, I I shape the shoe according to the foot, and then I weld the 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 support in the back. If you flip the shoe around, you can actually see the steel support in the back. Then I I, I actually attach the the leather piece on top because the leather just gives you a little bit more forgivingness at the at the heel because you know when your horse's heel uh, moves. From 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 um, loading and unloading, it actually weighs on the shoe, but with mm. the pad, it gives it a bit more support and, and it also doesn't wear the hoof off, so you get a bit of um, uh, heel growth in, in in fact, and 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 just a whole lot of support. So you're spreading the weight over the whole back of that foot instead of just uh, 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 um, on the rim of the foot. So, Look at uh, that! That looks great. Yeah. I can see, Riza, I can see that on that horse there. Can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should work for that horse. I mean, it will give him a lot more support in the back and, 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 and uh, support the areas. That, that, so at the moment, that horse of yours got shoes on, but it's just supporting. The shoe is just on your rim of your foot. So it's basically the weight carriage is just on your wall as such. Unless he goes into soft uh, uh, going and... and, and the, the, the ground actually supports from underneath but with, with the, the the actual frog support um look i I hate to call it frog support because i don't just mean supporting the frog me uh, personally it's a caudal support it's supporting the whole back of that foot that's why we got the dental impression material in there which is a, a, a rubberish material and what happens is it basically spreads the weight over most of the back of that foot so instead of just the wall taking pressure and uh, getting jammed up or getting worn off or in any case so you're spreading the weight over the whole back of that foot so the, your, your weight load on your actual wall is slightly less than it would be um, because the whole back of that foot is now shedding weight so mm -hmm. your heel will grow uh, a little bit better as well mm -hmm. um. but it, it, it also stabilizes your whole back end of your suspension of that foot because what happens is you're going to get less sinking into the ground so your foot's going to stay stable at the uh, uh, more stable plane at all times yeah that looks great um and what is that material that's in there that's the dental impression material that's the dental impression yeah um yeah, it's uh, called equinox okay yeah. fast equinox. set silicone putty all right. <clears throat> um, a couple more pictures. I mean, I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Show this. And, and that th well. here's the thing, too. The way, see, I have a, <clears throat> a video on how the frog works. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how when the pastern comes down and it presses down on that frog and the frog descends to ground. Well, with that support there, there's something mm -hmm. there to help support all that suspension and that horse's leg in the back of it. Right. Right. As well. So yep. here, here's the shoe he made. See the, yep. the leather yep. pad. Look, he, he, what's cool. That's got to help with traction. And look, you can put uh cocks in that. Couldn't you? Yeah. 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 That is for, that is for, 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 for studs, you know, this yeah, is still competing. Mm -hmm. this is still competing. In fact, is is doing like two and three star eventing and winning, you know. That's great. Yeah. Well, that my daughter's that's my daughter's eventing too, and she's in the middle of competing right now. So I'm scrambling trying to help support this guy. 
Yeah. yeah. This is the, this is the answer because this was. In fact, this was was crypto. It couldn't do anything, and then uh, we started doing a lot of different things, and 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 wow. things got better. And, and and I find at this point in time, we had to support everything else as well. And when doing this, the horse has been jumping. In fact, it was uh, chosen for the South African team, the the the, the national team, <laughs> and it's an old horse already. And I mean, it was it was a cripple. So uh, yeah, she's doing very well. That's great. Could I could I ask? Is there any way you might be able to attach these photos onto that thread, just so that because I'm going to have to um, have a conversation with the farrier, and it, that way it'll give me the ability to kind of copy them and send them if I need to to the farrier. Hey, he can, he can, we can send you all these pictures in Messenger. All right, that'd yeah. be that'd be fabulous. Yeah, and Steph I Reza, can you do that for her? Yeah, I'm just concerned. Well, about I could do the, it. Yeah, I'm just concerned about the communication piece, being able to communicate clearly what you know, what we're seeing. Because yeah, uh, from what from what, talking to my daughter, she spoke with the farrier who said, "Don't worry about it. It's it's an abscess blowout and it's fine." But then, you know, like when I yeah, saw yeah. the <laughs> lateral and the medial, yeah, I'm like, "There's there's more going on there than an abscess blowout." Yeah, more than that just going on me. But I'm like I said. You can see it happened at the point where you've got that compression ring or something yep. changed in that process. Something happened, either an injury or... Yeah, I was t I was telling Linda two months ago, Reese, he moved from Massachusetts, which is in the Northeast, down to Florida, which is, you know, subtropical, tropical. So he's had an entire change of everything. Um, and that's right yeah, where that ring is. So he's, had, he's yeah, been out of a lot of... Yeah, if you look at my comment that I said it happened about two months ago, I said there was an event that happened in his life at that time that either blew out an abscess or he hurt himself at that point. But now that I see the whole ring around the whole foot, uh, I tend to think that it might have been, um, uh, uh, look, it could have been an abscess, but I'm going to say I, I'm most uh, leading to the, 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 the change in everything there. It's not just an injury in one spot where you can see, okay, right, you injured that part and that's why it's going out like that. But that ring is right around it on the same 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 uh, uh, time time level, if you can call it that, the time stamp on that, you can see that there's an event that happened there at that time that, that caused either trauma to the foot or trauma in that area. So uh, it could be in the body. Look, you must check if that event ring is in all four feet. If it's in all four feet, it's, it's, it's to do a lot with a lot of other changes as well. But yeah, I, that, yeah I don't know. I didn't ask her to, I didn't ask her to send me photos of all four because I was just focused on this one. But that's, yeah, I do need to find that out. Yeah. Yeah, if you do, if, it, if that event thing is in, in, in all four feet, then it's, uh, it's, it's a change of, of either speed or uh, it's a big change that the horse went through, either uh, stress, uh, the, uh, injured during traveling or, or any of those type of things could cause uh, a cascade that can cause that type of thing. You know that changes in the foot. So I mean, if his hind gut was upset, like yeah, serious, seriously <clears throat> in that time period, it can also cause an event in the foot that will actually that's how you actually can read how um, uh, uh, what happened in the horse's body during that time. You know what I'm saying? That's why when yeah. I looked at I said two and a half, just over two months ago, something happened to this horse, and now that you said it moved two months ago, so there was a stress factor involved. And uh, I mean, he could have banged his foot, he could have hurt himself on a float or something like that. And uh, <coughs> there's an abscess and stuff like that. But I mean, you can see the event thing is there, prove that something happened at two months ago. Yeah. Like just over two months ago. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I really appreciate uh, all this information and help. And, um, you know, she's got a, she's doing the national championships in um, Kentucky the wow. first week in September. So I'm right. I'm trying to figure out how to get this, you know, how to get him supported. Yeah. That, right. <clears throat> yeah. And you got to stay on top of it because these right. farriers are wrong a lot and yeah. um, he's wrong. That's not an abscess blowout. That's mm -hmm. a cracked uh, structural failure of that heel. Mm -hmm. you know? And it, of course, since that other deal happened, you know, the heels aren't right. So they're under kind right. of pressure anyway. 
And yeah, so that's then mm-hmm. that other deal, well, uh, structural failures and, and leverages and all this stuff, they just take the path of least resistance. So it's going right up the other part of mm-hmm. the structural failure in the foot, which is that compression ring or right. event ring or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's you right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. If you could, um, you know, sh- share these pictures and options and choices for um, addressing it, that I think that would be so helpful because then, I, you know, I can share that with the farrier and say, you know, what do you think? And, you know, we can work together to try and figure out a way to get the job done so that he's yeah. supported caudally. Yeah, Okay. absolutely. So, yeah. What, what you should do is send me a friend request and I will, when I accept the friend request, I can send everything to you on uh, Messenger, which is easier than even if you want to have a chat while the ferry is there, maybe we can chat together, it doesn't matter, I mean, I don't mind, and we can have a video chat and talk to the guy and, and explain things to him, and me, if he's not maybe experienced in it, and maybe he is, I don't know, I mean, you know, if you show mm-hmm. him what, 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 what needs to be done or what you think. Okay. Uh, maybe yeah. you'll, you'll understand it, and I mean, look, you should under, be able to understand things like that because it's it's basically common knowledge <laughs> for them, you know, to 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 know these things. I mean, if he doesn't, then obviously then he's learned something new. <laughs> yeah. Either way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, do I need to do anything, or so that you can send those to me, or can you just find me through the um? Send him a phone. yeah. Send him a friend request. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. That's perfect, yeah. And makes it easy for me to just pick up on, on, on your friend request and then send it, uh, uh, send you all the stuff. And, uh, you know, it makes it easier. So if you do want to chat, uh, you can just send me a message or you can just video call me okay. or something. You know, it doesn't matter. Either way. All right. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I really do. So I have got, I, I didn't even talk to the, um, farrier at all because I was hoping that I was going to be able to do this first mm-hmm. so that I could be clear. Yeah. Um, and coach, you know, you don't know, talk like I, you know, I, I just want to be able to be understood when I have a discussion with the farrier. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Now, Riza, was, is this shoe we're looking at, was that a front shoe? No, that, that's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we need to start putting hind shoes on the front. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was just looking at it going, look, there's a shoe that's kind of shaped like kind of. <laughs> yeah, I don't fit Valor. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I say with, with doing something like this, what you can actually then do is you can shape, trim the foot. And, and trim it to your tech uh, uh, measurements and stuff like that. Then shape the shoe and then do whatever you need to do to yeah. to, to support everything else. So you're not going to have a shoe that, that, that uh, actually a lot of these people, what they do is they fit the, 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 the foot to the shoe that they've got, you know. That's why yeah. it'll take five minutes to put a shoe on because they'll take the shoe, okay, slightly white, and just bang it close and it flattens the foot out and then nail the shoe on. Then they off, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, it, it looks like, oh, they're doing it quite quickly and it's easy, but it's not. They're just shaping the sh- Then they'll just shape the, the, the foot according to the, the, the shoe instead of actually shaping the shoe to the foot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, 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 I mean, they won't trim, they'll, they'll trim the foot like flat and uh, take off around, uh, edges, and then they'll take the shoe and they'll just maybe open it or close it, whichever way, and then nail it on. I mean, <laughs> You know, it's, 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 it's like a process that they do, but they, they, they don't actually take into account that the foot needs to be a certain way and then shape the shoe a certain way and then put the, the together, you know? So mm-hmm. it's one of those things that where you better basically speak to the guy and, you know, you must understand what they want. But I know these are, sometimes they get very, very uh, aggro when you try and tell them what to do. You know, yeah, the, 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 that, the study, you know, don't tell me to do, how to do my job and that type of thing. You know, it's quite an ego thing with him. And the thing about it is, you look at that heel that could break off and take a right. good chunk of foot with it. And yeah. uh, you, she don't need that when she's going to be eventing. 
you know, but maybe you can approach well, this. That... Well, we're just concerned it's going to break off. See if it was me. I even add some maybe epoxy into that crack. I don't know, you know. Yeah, you, you can, you can. There's no no reason why you can't because look, that's a loose spot. It's not gonna, it's not gonna attach to the foot again. I mean, that's gonna come off at some stage. Yeah. I think maybe by the next shearing, um, uh, it will be lower down, and and if it's not supported in that area, it might just chip off, you know. So it's going yeah, to but it's off. it it needs to come down anyways because it's twice the size of the other heel. You know, yeah. if you look at, if you look at the comparison between the heels, yeah, but no. then you you have the deal too, where where one bulb is jammed up higher than the I other. Know. So right. then it's like like not the way it should be, you know. Right. So it's so it may be longer, it but you your bulbs aren't once. aren't right. level. Yeah, so you can't do it all at once. Yeah. You can't just you can't just take it down. Yeah, and it could be that one. See, one heel gets trimmed out more than the other. Right is what happens and then you you have a real uh weird thing going on but that's a whole other subject <laughs> <laughs> right i want to start there right well, right I, I would what what i would say is in in this case um seeing that the horse is still competing and everything i think support the photo part of the foot with a shoe that the shoe like this and then um you can still compete you can still carry on i mean if by any chance that piece breaks off the, the, the weight is still shared over the whole back of that foot, not just on that one area. So you're not going to lose anything. So you're still going to have proper support for the horse in the back anyway. Right. The whole the whole back of the foot. Yes. No, I totally yeah, agree. That foot. makes sense. Yep. So, I mean, uh, that's, that's something to think about if you, you know, do mm -hmm. something to do to help the horse. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, and I appreciate, I, I so appreciate your help. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'll send you a friend request so I can get the pictures and then I'll probably try and get in touch with the farrier tomorrow and see if I can have a conversation and kind of where we go yeah. from here because this has got to get done like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you're going to have to, you right now. you're going to have to be yourself. nice and assertive. Yeah. <laughs> You know, hopefully yeah. your daughter lets you be nice and assertive with the farrier too, because, because you yeah. know you kind of have to deal with two people there. I know. Well, she knows Where that I'm doing this, and Florida. okay, Sorry? that's good. Well, guy would go over it with her first. You know. Yeah. Oh no, she's been trimming and she's been learning with me, so okay, she's good. Not, yeah, she's not you know completely unknowledgeable. She has a good okay. understanding. So okay, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, it's a good process for her. It is hard, though, because, you know, she has a trainer and you know yeah. how these things go. And it's... Are, are strange, not they. I tell you what, <laughs> they, they, they just want to put shoes on every bloody horse. And I mean, mm -hmm. a, a, year, a trainer year has made me so cross because she, she actually told the girl, look, if your horse doesn't have shoes on, you're going to fall off. And I said, what nonsense. Yeah. She's always been jumping without shoes. She's always been jumping. Uh, like 1.2, 1 1.4 1 uh, meters, and 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 uh, no problem. The horse been winning, but now all of a sudden the horse just gonna fall off if the horse doesn't have shoes. And I said, what nonsense, you know? I yeah. Think the trainer's supposed to instill confidence and and, and skill, not like, yeah. scare the night out of the kids. Yeah, but they don't know. All they know is all they've done, and what they know is that horses that are competing need shoes, and so. Like I said, I got away with it um, until this guy was eight. He's now 10. He's had shoes for the last two years only because she's moving up. And there was just, yeah. I could not hold off anymore. Yeah. The trainer yeah. the trainer said he's got to have shoes. And, you know, there's yeah. nobody at the upper levels that's competing, you know, barefoot. And so, you know, I think the more there's this some people the that Olympics. are starting. Uh, the Olympics. Yeah. The Olympics. Yeah, yeah, the Olympics yeah. there is. I Actually, know. that's that not true. Good. There are there are four star horses that um they're not there are very few of them but there's right, there's a, few, there are right. a couple yeah. yeah 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 that's what I mean there's very few and they're not well known and so I think though as it becomes better um you know no, knowledge we'll see more but right now it's still a rough road yeah. <laughs> for a 17 and, year old girl right who's yeah, no, yeah. I, know, I know I know exactly what you're talking about because I mean yeah. these, these trainers can get really aggressive for the kids and tell them. I've seen it. I mean, uh, and they get into the kids' head that the horse must have shoes and then they must have studs and then they must have mm -hmm. studs in front and all sorts of bloody things. 
I mean, I've gone through it already, so I know exactly how they. they yeah, so they they should they should be politicians. <laughs> well, well, they are. They are worst politicians. Right? <laughs> Work for the WHO or something. I don't know. Got to have shoes. Yeah. Risa, can I ask you about uh, one question about the shoeing? Like, uh, you know, um. Do you have any um, any clients or any horses that are coming off of this shoeing after um, after the back of the feet have been restored? Yes, yes, yes. That's actually yeah. the reason why we're doing it. You know. What, yeah. What would you I, post I, some I'm, pictures about that, like at some point in the future, like you? Because um, I'd like I really like because also I'd like to show that as an example and explain to people that you know this is the result. Um, yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, there is a couple that's probably going to come out of shoes soon um, that have been treated this way anyway. Oh, okay. Um, I will, I will I'll keep up to date with it and I'll just let you know and, and take the pictures and then and, and yeah. it to you. Yeah, so and, the, 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 yeah. And Cibola. And they don't even have From the... Portugal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He raises the, jumpers. Jumping. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And uh, if they don't even have the becoming out of shoes like also it just um you know going from this type of shoe to a regular to a shoe, shoe too yeah yeah. yeah yeah that would be also informative too yeah definitely i mean okay this, this, this type of shoes are used mostly for uh horses with with issues where things are as collapsed in the back and i mean, I mean a lot of horses things collapse in the back because of trimming style because of workload there's a lot of things that can cause it but i'm just saying this is the type of shoe we're using to to basically support the whole area and then get it back to to health and uh, when it's back to health you can decide if you want to go with normal shoes again you can go barefoot it's completely up to the owner what they want to do you know i mean in, 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 if it needs to be you know if you see listen things are starting to to, to go pear shape then just uh Correct it again, you know what I'm saying? That, that's the, sure. the, 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 the gist of the, the, the game where, where people have horses and they're competing and stuff like that. And I know a lot of people that compete, or, I mean, they say and advise them and, or actually strongly advise them to put shoes on, you know, uh, basically forcing them to put shoes on. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, if you're gonna compete and you've got a trainer that's doing that, you gotta also then adapt with your horse to try and keep your horse comfortable and healthy. And uh, so you can compete and then be competitive. Yeah. Uh, also, how much experience do you have with the composite shoes that Linda was uh, Linda was pointing well, out? I got, look, I, I've used it a couple of times, but um, not for competitions. I haven't seen it work, working in competitions because the problem with the composite shoe is um, on on a grassy surface it might slip because it's like a I just didn't think it was a... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You see... Uh, I, I advise I, I composite shoes for people that can't shoe. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's easier. That way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Makes, that makes perfect sense. Because, I mean, I've, 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 I've helped people with, with composite shoes that was shoeing their own horses that never shot a horse in the clutch. So, you know, it helps them because you don't have to shape the shoe, really. So you just go by the size of your horse's foot shape your horse's shoe, uh, foot and then nail it on, you know, it's not like a big deal. But like I said, it, it helps the horses to, to, to grow more hoof and, and so they can then do a bit more corrections on the foot. So um, in that, that way, the, the compos composite shoes would work. But I've done a um, composite shoes in, 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 uh, in competitions because I know if you've got a, if, I suppose if, you, if, you, if you're on a, a, a sand or a, a, a a, a different type of base, more of a forgiving base on your uh, arena, then I think yes, um, the composite shoe might help <clears throat> uh, or work the same as the uh, normal shoe would. Um, but uh, if you're on, on the grass, then uh, if it's in the grass arena, then I would not do a composite shoe because uh, it tends to slip on the grass. Mm -hmm. Unless you can put studs in, but then you've got to put a lot more studs in and maybe smaller studs. I don't know. I mean, I haven't, I haven't used them for for, for uh, competition at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've hunt. I um. I slipped on the grass hunting in uh, in hoof boots 
with rub, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a little. You just need a just need a little wet patch of grass, and then yeah, and then, yeah, it's, it's pretty yeah. dangerous. It's a slipping spoon, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not it's not advisable to do composite shoes on in competition. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise somebody. Okay. Unless you're gonna then drill a whole lot of holes in the shoe and put in a whole lot of small studs, maybe just to get a bit of traction or keep a bit of traction onto that foot. You know. Okay. Got it. All right. Thanks. No well, I'm glad Reese is here because he is so good at this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, me, I can only do uh, when it comes. I can't shoe horse. I would have that what he does before I would ever do composite. Mm -hmm. You know, but he wasn't here. So I was trying to think of something. No, that was, no, that was perfect. That know, was really, really that helpful. Help. Mm -hmm. Just so the heels don't break off. But I didn't realize she was like competition jumping and yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Mm -hmm. so what level cool. is she? What level is she showing at? She's just novice now, but she's okay. training, training higher. But she's doing the national um, uh, championships in Kentucky at novice right. level. Yeah. Okay. Good. What, what, what height is she jumping? Oh gosh, you're gonna have to ask. Novice me that. is like. I, novice is what two nine three foot. No, I yeah, think two nine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that, that two nine three feet foot area. Yeah, about that. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I'm uh, yeah. I don't know what that's in that metric. Mm -hmm. Metric two foot would probably be close to one meter. Say. Yeah, a meter, a little me, little over a meter. Yeah. yeah. A mm -hmm. ninety, I think that's what they call ninety. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, and I mean yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, then they go up to 1.2, 1 meter, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. You know, I mean, I mean, this horse that I've just shown you pictures of this foot, um, she was struggling at 90, and then she wouldn't jump for a long time because she wasn't happy. And then uh, we gave her a bit of time off, and I was gonna, and now she's doing two star eventing. I mean, she could do three star, but uh, <laughs> I think the owner's just not because the horse got starting to get arthritis and all sorts because it's getting old now and she's been in yeah. the horse for quite a while and she's doing well with the horse i mean ever since she restarted with the horse every competition if she didn't win she places quite highly second or third so you know she's been doing very well and uh yeah now she's bought a new horse now and this horse is also we've been working on this horse as well so yeah we'll see how this one goes this one's already winning 90 so we'll yeah so good, you have experience with Eventors. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I took a couple of horses on as well that did uh, just show jumping, and mm -hmm. uh, it won national championships and stuff like that. So they've been doing well. So, so I think what we're doing is working. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good. This is. I love this yeah. picture here. Man, I I like the way you've taken pieces of rust and utilized them across the back of these shoes. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Plus, look, there's I more just, traction. I, right? yeah, I just saw the traction and I thought, well, why not use it? Because, I mean, you know, two for the price of one. <laughs> yeah. Are those Kirkguard shoes? No, these are Delphus. It's made by the same company as Kirkguard, but it's like, this is like a knockoff for Kirkguard, if you call it that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. But the okay, Kirkguard shoes, I mean, it's basically the same. I think the Dalf is a slightly narrower, where the uh -huh. Kirkguards are slightly wider. Uh, okay. Like wider web shoes. So um, the, the Kirkguard, uh, I think, might, might fit a bit better. Uh -huh. um, but I think it's also slightly heavier. <laughs> you know, so it's that's... a wider web. Yeah, that's something she could think about, too. Um, and yeah. choosing the type of shoes for him, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. Kirkguards are wider webbed. Then that is like the I they do these look like Kirk Guard, so I was a pretty good guesser when I close. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, these are the Delphi are made by the same company, so it's just like a oh, how about like that? A, yeah, it's like it's like a Kirk Guard, but not a Kirk Guard, <laughs> yeah, a Kirk Guard, but not and stuff. So yeah. that is a, a good type of shoe that'd be something to look into too. To yeah, um, the other thing that you can also look into, um, especially for uh, uh competition wise. 
um, I always tell people to look at, you, you do get the Kirkot uh, aluminium shoe, mm -hmm. aluminium, uh, which is also uh, very good for jumping because then obviously your shoe load on the feet gets lighter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With a, with a, with a, with a steel shoe would, would weigh a certain amount. And, and how are they for aluminium. traction? Uh, same, same traction. You don't lose traction on, on, on okay. either one of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you don't have a problem with the traction. The only thing is, um, then the welding the back plate in, uh, <laughs> it's got to be done with somebody that does aluminium welding. That's the uh, right. downside of it. Where with steel shoes, anybody can weld it. If you've got a stick welder or MIG welder, you can weld it very quickly. But with aluminium shoe welding, I mean, I suppose, unless your guy can do or is, he does uh, welding, aluminium welding, then you can put a, get a plate and put it in. You know what I'm saying? But if mm -hmm. he doesn't, then... Uh, I suppose then the steel would be an option. I mean, I don't know what other options there are with the aluminium shoes. But the aluminium shoes, normally when I do aluminium shoes, I would take that aluminium shoe and then ha um, shape it and everything. And uh, what I'll do is then I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll basically um, uh, uh, trim the foot, shape the shoe, and then what I'll do is I'll put a, a cast around the foot so it doesn't break out or anything, and I'll leave it. And I'll come back the next day and then uh, take the shoes with me and have it welded up and bring it back mm -hmm. to the extent shoe doors. But I mean, I don't know how people work out there, but that's the type of thing that I do. I mean, these are these are shoes that they make, the aluminium. These are also aluminium shoes that I see on the screen right now. Um, mm -hmm. But they're all prefab, you know. So, I mean, it's not, I don't know, you're either going to be lucky to fit it beautifully or, you know, one of those type of things. But I mean, also they've got a, it's a thin. This is more like an egg bar shoe. That's not really mm -hmm. giving you that portal support that you actually need. You need this wide bar right across, basically over your last. Um, if you count nails from the toe nail, three nails back, by the fourth nail, that's where your bar. If you if you take, actually take a line through there, you'll find that that is probably where your your the coffin bone or pedal bone ends. So basically. From that area backwards, you're going to support the part that doesn't have a bone. So you're basically supporting the, the flexible part of the the, the the caudal aspect of the foot. That is actually what you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Because the, because the rest of the foot uh, contains the, the pedal bone, which keeps it more stable than the back part of the foot. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of the back part of the foot of the uh, collapses. And uh, um, I mean, a lot of guys tell you, oh, you need frog support. It's not just the frog support that you need. It's the whole back of the foot that you need support. And because um, just by supporting the frog with a, with a bar, like like heart bar, um, you're not gonna right. you're not gonna support your collateral grooves and bars and the whole right. back uh, suspension system. So you're just gonna get like pressure on the frog itself, which could also be a problem because then all too much pressure on the frog will push everything sideways. So if there's right. no support sideways, you're going to get problems there too. So that you can actually flatten the foot out that way. So um, to support the bars, the collateral grooves, the whole back part of the foot, just spreading the weight right across the whole back part of the foot instead of just on the rim of the, 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 the heel. Yeah, that's what you said, like from the fourth nail back? Yeah, no, no, from, I'd say from the, yeah, from the fourth nail back, you mm -hmm. can support the foot. Yeah, uh, that's normally, I mean, whatever size your horse is, you'll find from the fourth nail yeah. back because you, we, know, we don't normally nail in the, in the fourth nail because it's just too far back because the fourth nail is nearly, I, I would say, just on, on mm -hmm. where, the poodle, where the beetle bone ends. So you don't want to put nails there because that's all flexible part of the hoof, so you're going to be locking mm -hmm. the, 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 the foot. Uh, into a situation where it's not going to be able to flex and move the way it should at the back. So mm -hmm. that's why I normally just shoe from the front uh, front three nails, and that's mm -hmm. it. You know, with mm -hmm. the clips, the clips helps quite a bit to, to hold the shoe in place and, and, and mm -hmm. not allowing it to, to slip and twist and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. This looks like that shoe you put on. Yeah, this is looks like a Kirkot. This is a Kirkot. You okay. A little K in the, in the number two, then be below it, a little K in the circle. Uh huh. That's a that's a Kirkot. Okay. Oh, and the K, yeah. Well, that's a good looking shoe. Now, 
have you ever thought of putting hind shoes on the front feet? Um, I have done it before. <laughs> well, because of what, <laughs> you know, because you. technically, <laughs> technically the, the front feet are not round. No, no, they're not round. They're not round at all. So what do you do when you shape in a shoe? Like, you know, you get a keg shoe like this and it's round. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, although yeah. these okay. these you could shape more that, that aren't yeah, so yeah. round. These are better. These are better. Some, yeah, these are better, better um, uh, uh, shaped shoes. It's more shaped towards the yeah. shoe itself. So yeah. I suppose you don't have to do too much shaping on, on that type of shoe to put it on the front. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I think front shoes that, 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 that it's like pre made is very really round. Yeah, so I mean, look at that. Yeah, because I, I I basically uh, shaped the, 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 the actual shoe um, more like an oval shape, you know. Yeah. Because, uh, after I trimmed, obviously, then I'll shape the shoe because then yeah. I will shape the shoe according to the, the foot that I've got. Yeah. Well, and, and, and this, I mean, the, the, the that that'd be hard to shape that shoe, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, Harder than yeah. than one of these. It's already kind of yeah, that obviously. shape. Yes, yes. That that say this uh, the put the shoe on the on uh, on the on the right here is yeah. easier to shape. You know, either either way because it's already got the 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 the, the pillars. Or I wouldn't say pillars. So quarters more <laughs> more uh, shaped correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, correctly the way we trim, not the yeah. way everybody else trim. Yeah. Because everybody else trim around foot. So, you know, that's the, yeah. that's the difference. Or square foot. Yeah, you got square, natural so balance square. shoes and they yeah, they make a square foot. Mm -hmm. And you can see the toe cord, the toe cord is there. It's like completely square. Like a, they, they use as a, if you, you take a line across it and you take a line across at the heel, it becomes a complete square box. So, yep, yeah, see there. Cool. There we go, there we go, there mm -hmm. we go. You can see it exactly there. You can see we draw a line across the heel and you look at the toes with a, with a bar, that wider bar is in the toe. You'll see it's like, almost like a little square box. Yeah. Yeah, Shores' feet are definitely not shaped like that. Not like that, not at all. <laughs> I don't know where they come on that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they come. <laughs> yeah, he come on that from his study of wild horses, not understanding. Yeah. Uh, and he's a super nice guy. I really like Gene Obnick, but but his interpretation of wild horse feet, um, I don't agree but, with. Yeah, I suppose, you know, the people... Uh, they, they, they only they know what they know, you know, or what they yeah. think they found. Out. You know, that's that's how they they they, they, they carry on. It's, it's almost like um, they found something out, and that's the beat, and all all all, all of that's like that. They don't actually change their way or, or try and investigate why it's like that and why the other one isn't like that. You know, yeah. The real truth of it. You see, that's the thing. They found out this, and that is now it. You know, and I mean, same with Jamie Jackson. That's the same thing. He found out whatever he found out, and now he's changed everything to that. Yeah. And then these oaks follow each other, and, and at the end of the day, they all end up at the same point, you know? At, I know. I was thinking of that today about how, um, well, what happened, you know, people start jumping on the bandwagon, and they take this from that person and that from that person, and they just put all together, and they think they understand yeah, they it, make, but they really don't. And, uh, and then they make their own their own their own uh, system up. They, they work out their own yeah. system, and then that that is their system, and this is what they teach people, and yeah, and it just spirals another another uh, uh, um, false information, if you can call it that. Yeah. Or mixed just... information. It's called mixed information because some of it's yeah. actually true. That's in there. So it's like mixed mixed. Mixed it, just a mix and match. I call it eclectic. You know, yeah. if you have eclectic taste, then you take something from this and something from that person, and that that's yeah. okay if it's correct. Yeah, if you take you the correct parts out of them, maybe you end up with a complete correct thing. But if you take parts that is fashionable, 
you know, now this is fashionable and tomorrow that's fashionable. Yep. You know, cutting the yield of what's fashionable and that type of thing, you know. So it's, yeah, it's, it's there was a, a good, um, somebody shared with me uh, an article from, uh, oh, who's that guy? He's a barrier. Um, no, people are sharing his articles every once in a while. Progressive uh, Equin. Progressive Equin. Progressive yeah, Wayne, yeah, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. He actually he did a a, a deal on hills that was pretty interesting about yeah, yeah. um how he, you know, thought they should have heels. So I thought that yeah, was look, pretty good. He's definitely on the right track, but there's also some things that I've noticed that he does that that, that doesn't make sense and, and, and things that he writes about which is which is just completely stupid. But I mean, I think he's got such a big following, and people are so uh, in awe of him. So obviously, uh, you know, he tends to just carry on. <laughs> you know, but look, he's yeah. got a lot of good points. He's got a lot of good yeah. He 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 has some good points. Yeah. I yeah. You know, here yeah. and there. But the thing about it is, also, what they also what, very big ego. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably both of them do have a big ego. And so but the thing that one day. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the thing that needed to be done was they need to dump everything and go right back to the drum board. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think, need to trash you, everything. You, you uh, see what he did one day is he, he put on a post and, 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 and uh, invited people to put pictures on and with, with, with open heel shoes because open heel shoes to him was now the devil, you know? Uh -huh. Because now every horse must have portal support but i said listen you don't have to have you eat some doors correct and shoot those correctly no 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 this is yeah it. they say he invited everybody to put pictures on of their horse's feet and uh to, to, to prove his point so mm -hmm. i put a couple of pictures on and showed him there's open horse uh, open heel shoes with correct uh every the foot was basically correct yeah <laughs> if the foot's correct block me. <laughs> you know <laughs> deleted my pictures and blocked me <laughs> oh, that doesn't surprise me. He's got me blocked too, and I don't ever remember ever saying anything on there. Yeah, no, no, you know? it's just because, yeah, it's just because, uh, 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 you know, I, he asked for pictures. I showed him pictures and I explained it to him. And then uh, the next thing I see, I couldn't yeah. comment. And then well, you might know something. Gone. See, I had that feeling yeah. about him anyway. You yeah, might know something. See. see? Yeah, because I was now basically going against his brain because he was trying to yeah. run, uh, run a narrative which didn't work because I was proving him wrong. And yeah. A lot of things it was also giving him a bit of uphill. And now they used me as like, look at that picture. You were yeah. talking about that. But, so he had to remove. <laughs> yeah, he had to remove you. So um, I couldn't be part it, of the conversation. Yeah, there's a lot of egotistical kind of yeah. narcissistic he, tendency he, attention he, crap going on what with I like about him, what I do like about that. him though is that he does have a, a progressive nature let's call it that way because he does take x-rays has to look at yeah things, and he, he has a nice needs. page he does yeah, some good stuff needs, yeah the horse needs to heal and yeah he's, he's, he's now learned that type of thing but I think he's also learned a lot from it because I think uh, uh, there was a lot of attacking in this on his page as well, and they were talking about you. But he wasn't talking about heels for uh, in the beginning when I first saw him, and then later on he started talking about that. And then I did some mock-ups on feet, and he never mocked up feet. And then all of a sudden I see that he's starting.